facts and indeed so far have delivered perhaps very little. Two weeks ago, Sydney looked in superb touch when they outplayed Carlton for three and three quarter quarters. But last Saturday, they were defeated by Collingwood at Victoria Park by a massive 99 points. Melbourne, on the other hand, were third on the ladder after round eight. They then had the bye, but since then they've lost five matches in a row and plummeted out of the top six. So both of these two teams playing for perhaps just a little bit of pride this afternoon because Melbourne, if in fact they do win here today, still have an outside chance of making the final six. A win vitally important for them and the Swans won't be making it easy for them. The record of the two sides that played many, many games between them over the years, 166 in total. Sydney has the better record. They've won 87 and Melbourne has won 79. A very good afternoon now to Peter McKenna and Don Scott. And I think it's going to be a pretty close game. I think it will be, Pete. It's always a tough game up here, Don. And uh, Sydney, they grow a leg up here. And although a poor performance against Collingwood last week, they're a different side on their home ground. Yes, we always talk about the travelling side and uh, different climates. The ground is hard out there. It's very sunny as we quickly run through the teams. The back line, Page is a goer from the Riverina. Cordy, consistent year in trip. Well, he's another goer against Jakovic, who played well last week. Bennett and Eichol. Well, the half-back line for Sydney, Mark Bay is a very, very good, that's a good half-back line. Athorn played very well here against Carlton, Tui a top player, but look, look at that half-forward line. Lion a champion at half-forward, they'll need a big game from him. Doolan, the young five, his first year, Ben Doolan from Albury, a relation of Vin Doolan, who used to play at uh, North Melbourne as a rover, Murphy and O'Dwyer from Sumption. Tingo, it's great to see him back. He had a nasty accident, fell through a pane of glass, and he's back playing. Well, this will decide the game. I think the Sydney forward line, whether they can kick enough goals. Young Nettlebeck often has played at fullback. The lining up at centre forward against Spalding has been in and out. Cuthbert said, I reckon he'll line up on the forward line today. Lewis West, it's good to see Jim West back. He was a leading goal kicker here last year. Lawson uh, against Yates. Bryce coming back after a hamstring injury and Road, who's been consistent all year. Well, one of the favourites for the Brownlow medal, Jimmy Steins, in, in sensational form at the moment, uh, with Todd Viney ruck roving against Brad Tunbridge, Dennis Carroll and Mitchell. Pretty evenly contested the following division. And the interchange, well, Jason loves a goal kicker and he could start on the ground. Kerr. Uh, formerly a North Melbourne player against Stretch and Beveridge, who both have had one game in the reserves. Right, thank you, Don, and thank you, Peter. A magnificent day in the Harbour City, and we'll be back to check the weather when we return to the SCG in just a moment. Hi, I'm Dennis Carroll from the Sydney Swans. Keep enjoying the footy on Channel 7. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> And welcome back to the Sydney Cricket Ground, the Melbourne side first out under the ground for this afternoon's match in round 15. Cameron Williams will be joining us on the boundary today and in the dressing rooms. Magnificent weather in the Harbour City as we go to him now for the Mitsubishi Motors ground report. Thanks very much, Peter. Yes, certainly if this game lives up anywhere near to the weather, it'll be an absolute boomer. A glorious day here today. We're going for a high of 24 degrees, but I don't think we'll reach that at the moment on the Mitsubishi weather gauge. It's 18.7 degrees centigrade. The humidity, a very low and comfortable 34%. Now, the wind will affect the flight of the ball. It's 10 to 15 knots, but it's blowing straight across the ground, so it won't give a goal advantage to either end. The ground condition is excellent. The forecast is for a fine and sunny day. Well, thank you, Cameron. Well, of course, the Fitzroy Football Club has been in the news a lot lately with their fundraising drive. The club attempting to raise $800,000. The date originally set down for that was the end of June. The deadline has now been extended. They've already raised in excess of $400,000, as Sandy Roberts reports. The Lions' huge debt of almost $800,000 and the club's plan to erase it has been one of football's talking points this season. The original deadline to clear the books was today, but that has been extended and President Leon Wiegard is very hopeful that the public's enthusiastic support continues to grow. Time, uh, we, did, we were very hopeful originally of getting the whole thing done by the 30th of June and, and getting rid of all our debt by that date. And the reason that we set ourselves a very tight course was that we knew from the Richmond experience that the voluntary workers all got very exhausted, and they do. You know, the fatigue factor is very real. So uh, we set ourselves a tight uh, schedule. That worked very well. We've raised $500,000, but we really do need to rid ourselves of our entire debt to be part of the AFL in a meaningful way and get on with the business of being as strong as the strongest. Last Sunday, the club raised almost $50,000 when 8,000 fans braved wintry conditions at Prince's Park to see Fitzroy's 1979 side clash with Carlton's premiership team of the same year. 
but now Wigard is looking to the future. Well, the major thing is, and it's out now among our supporters, is a very, very big raffle. And it sounds pretty uh, petty, doesn't it? But this is an enormous thing. There's over eighty thousand dollars worth of prizes. If that's supported by our supporters and others, we're OK. I mean, it comes down to that. There are other functions too we're working on, but the big thing is this raffle. If it works, we're OK. If it doesn't, we've really got to go back to the drawing board. While the season on the field has been tough for the Lions, they continue to languish near the bottom of the ladder, Wigard is adamant that the Lions will again be a force in the near future. We've got a very strong list of young players. Uh, we had a side on the field the other day that averaged 22 years of age each. Now, they're all young kids all getting experience this year. I'm never, ever more confident that we'll have a good side in a couple of uh, years, within the next two years. Uh, so that side of it's all right. We know we can run a, run a club without making a loss. The infrastructure's there. Our support base is not as small as people think. And we also have a very large group of young kids coming through from the Doncaster area. So it look, all looks pretty good for the future. Sandy Roberts reporting on the Fitzroy situation as it stands at the moment. And I think all football fans across the nation would say, come on, the Roys, and let's hope that they do make it by their new deadline time. All right, ideal conditions here in Sydney this afternoon. Truly a magnificent day for football. Could even be a little bit on the warm side. We'll take a break. Back with the action coming up in just a moment. Hi, this is Gary Lyon from the Melbourne Footy Club. Get into the footy action live on Channel 7 Sport. And the magnificent sight at the Sydney Cricket Ground. I guess AFL heads would be pleased if there were a few more people out there, but truly a magnificent day for football, Peter McKenna. It is a magnificent get, uh, day up here, and... Uh, Hardly any breeze, and Melbourne, there's the Melbourne group, Alan Jakovic, number 13, and trying to get the guys going. Will it be diesel or bust? I think that's dust. Oh, dust, is it? Hmm. <laughs> Got a one-track oh, so mind. Is. Definitely dust, and there might be a bit of it out there this afternoon, too. Well, it's a vital game. The umpires, Michael Abbott and Brendan Carlin, what a vital game for Melbourne, Don. Yes, it is, Pete. And uh, these conditions, well, they wouldn't be used to them because we've had a lot of rain, a record rain falling the month Don, of June in Melbourne. Can I ask you, will the two full forward situation work with Jakovic and Bennett? Now, they've both gone down to the square. Well, it worked last week when Bennett was playing at centre-half forward. First quarter, Melbourne going to the right, Sydney to the left. Steins gets the first tap out. Steins, one of the favourites for the Brownlow medal. And here's a chance already for the Demons through Viney up towards Jakovic, but the ball beats him over the boundary line. Tui has the job we see of minding him this afternoon. Well, you see what happened on that occasion, Peter. Bennett led out and Jakovic stayed in the square. Decoy full forward trick. Melbourne used it effectively in their great sides in the 60s with a player by the name of Athel Webb. And Lauren Roweth. Alan Roweth as well. Tui, the three Swans players down there. Tunbridge lying on top of the ball and about six or seven others. The umpire, I think, will bounce it, and in fact, that is the choice. The Swans have got numbers down on their back line. Brett Lovett, the Melbourne half-back, is wandering around the centre of the ground by himself. Cordy punches the ball over the line. Maybe intended for Barry Mitchell, but he, he didn't find him with that tap. And so a throw in, Melbourne's left forward pocket. It's going to be Tunbridge and Bennett. One by Tunbridge, didn't get the ball out very far. Bennett tries to barge his way through the pack. A chance for Jakovic. Now he runs into two of his teammates down there. Left foot snapshot won't quite be a score. And the ball is rushed over the boundary line. And this time the throw will take place in Melbourne's right forward pocket. Yes, that's the captain of the Sydney Swans, Dennis Carroll. And Craig Nettlebeck has got some fans down there. Tunbridge gets it down to Mitchell. He had a fresh air shot. Oh, good play, Jakovic. Can't get his hand pass in. It's deep in that forward pocket for Melbourne. Players diving on top of it. Loose ball comes to Mitchell. Doolan. Athorn. Athorn to the half forward line. It's all Melbourne though. And the mark has been taken by Obst. Obst has a casual bounce. Sprints away and brings it to the half forward line. Good pass. And he's found Simon Eichold. Eichold a long way out from goal. It'll be 60 metres out. He'll set it up for his high flying forwards. Gary Lyon oh, was, held. was held. Free kick, surely. Uh, free kick to Gary Lyon. A bad free kick given away by the Swans defence. A lot of that does go on, Peter. One was paid yesterday, but I wish the umpires would really start and wake up. And I hope this is an indicative of the tone they're going to set for the day. Where players being manhandled. Look at this. The ball is still in flight. Look at Lyon trip. Now, a lot of that goes on. Maybe not quite as bad as that, but it goes on a lot in football today. 
Gary Lyon, a very acute angle, not an easy shot. Even though he's close in, he stabs and sneaks it in for a goal. Great start for the Demons. First goal of the game to Gary Lyon. Well, you couldn't really argue with the free kick. We'll see it again, but Gary Lyon certainly manhandled. Here it comes. Here's Lyon playing on the forward line. Started centre half back last week. He played actually he played everywhere last week. He plugs holes. A very versatile player and a very good player at that. The Melbourne captain. Interesting duel on the wing there. A bumping duel. Kelly, Kelly and, and Viney. Viney. Jay Viney. Tunbridge wins it out. Going through pretty solidly with Nettlebeck. Clears the way for his skipper, Dennis Carroll. Carroll down just a little bit too long with the kick. And Andrew Ops will take it. Or Peter Road. It's going to be Obst at the left halfback flank. Booming punt kick from Carroll. And it carried just a little bit too far. Stein's the target. In the middle of a big pack of players. Higgins. And it beats Yates over the line. No, it's still kept in play. Nettlebeck over to Lawson. Streaming into goal and stabs at the ball, but has put it through for only a minor score. One behind to Sydney. Their first score, and they trailed by five points. He's become, Peter, a bit of a cult figure up here, Jamie Lawson, because he's so small and so quick. He's very quick. From up near the Wentworth region. Road at halfback. Good solid defender, formerly of Carlton. Kicks towards the centre wing position. The ball slapped out of trouble. A chance for Lovett to hit the ball forward. In fact, he hit it towards Nettlebeck. We now see without the headband. Mitchell steadies. Measures the pass. Excellent play by the Swans veteran. He really measured that pass. And a chance for Sydney's first goal. Love taking it on the chest. Just looking at Jason Love. I think that is Brett Lovett's man. And we saw Brett Lovett up around centre wing. Love it, who was originally a loose man. Obst is now the loose man for Melbourne on the back line. So Jason Love from 35 metres out gets Sydney's first goal. Swans by a point. Murphy, a quick kick to the centre of the ground. That was Love getting it to Mitchell. Oh, beautiful kick by Mitchell. A 60 metre kick west. Oh, a diving attempt to take it on the second bite. Couldn't do so. Graham Yates shuffles it out. Here's Higgins. Brought to ground. Backup support from Kelly. Kelly has the ball smothered. Oh, was that in the back against Kelly? Umpire didn't think so. It must have been pushing the side. That's Peter Road clearing the ball to the half back line. Lewis went past it. Then goes in to grab it again. Spalding with him. It'll be a bounce now. That is, oh. oh, that is a ridiculous decision as we see coming away with a Jay Viney. Beautiful pass to Jakovic, but both players had that ball out in that half back flank. Jakovic will kick from 50. He leads very, very well. He's a beautiful kick normally, but that one a little bit to the right and through for one behind. So the scores are locked together, 1-1 one, one apiece. And there's Robert Kerr. Now, he's an interesting player. The player on the left, Robert Kerr, former BFA player, a good BFA player in Melbourne. And uh, good to see him back in the side. He had a serious injury last year. Is Tui to the half back line. Cordy He's had an excellent year. Neil Cordy, Lyon over the top. He was looking for Eichold. Melbourne through Flintoff. Get it to Bennett. Bennett inside Eichold. Here's a chance for Melbourne from directly in front. This is Kevin Dyson having a kick, and he has put it wide and through for a behind. First time I've seen Dyson in uh, a short sleeve jumper, Peter. I'm not saying it's the first time he's played in one, but he usually has the longer sleeves. Former, when well, you're speaking of VFA players, he played uh, with Oakley, of course. Carroll, just up from the back pocket for Sydney. One of the best kicks in the competition. And gets plenty of distance with that. Bennett was the high flyer over the top of Cordy. Neither player able to bring the ball down. And to throw in close to the centre wing position, probably about 15 metres on Melbourne's attacking side of centre. Steins and Tunbridge. Steins from the back. Cuthbertson might have got a heave ho in the back. Dyson looks for Lovett, who actually did the shepherding. Jay Viney, a high kick. Knocked away by his brother Todd. 
Spalding was looking for a free kick, tackle applied by Bayes, and the umpire has decided it's going to be a standoff. I shall the last to get up. It's interesting, Melbourne's forward line. they got Lyon now in a pocket beside Djakovic. Djakovic and Bennett at centre-half forward. Love. Out of the congestion, but straight to Lovett. So Brett Lovett. Kicks up to Viney. Couldn't take the mark. Steins. A short kick. Chance for the Demons. The ball from Flintoff. Into the forward pocket. Djakovic was the target. And the boundary umpire will throw it in. One of the rookies in the Demon squad. Played last week and fairly well. Bennett to do the ruck work with Cordy. Cordy gets the position. Bennett has the height. Mitchell and Lyon. And possibly the Swans making about two or three metres, but only that. 17 and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Glenn Lovett looks to be in a bit of trouble on the bench, Pete. So let's see what happened there. Must have happened pretty early on. Mitchell, this time roves it well. Looks for somebody going past. Cordy. It's boot the ball pretty quickly. The ball up towards the 50 metre line. A chance for Thrip to spin out. And gets his own hand pass. Looks for Higgins. And he finds him on the right half back flank. Leon Higgins to centre wing. And it's fisted away by Paul Bryce, the former North Melbourne player on left of screen. What's the report, Cameron Williams, down there on Glenn Lovett? Well, Glenn has uh, damaged his left wrist. They're not sure whether it's a fracture or not, but they. It's actually his right wrist. They're taking him off now uh, to go down. The doctor said that uh, he's not willing to make a, a comment on it yet, but he doesn't think there'll be any further part in the game for Glenn. The ball on the Swans forward line. West caught with it by Road. So that's bad luck for Melbourne because Glenn Lovett has probably been one of their best players this year. Certainly one of the most improved on. My word, it'd be interesting if they did a best and fairest count, how he'd figure it would be out of he and Todd Viney, I should imagine. Well, I saw him play a great game against Essendon at Windy Hill a few weeks back. Uh, Glenn Lovett on a wing on Greg Anderson too, it was. Now there was Steins, oh, Kelly's working hard. How were the umpire holding the... Well... I thought he had the ball and they played holding the man to Graham Yates. Well, Yates from half back to centre wing, Gary Lyon sets himself, has it fisted away by Thrip. Melbourne going in very, very hard. It's a desperate game for them because if they drop this one, I think they could almost kiss the finals goodbye. But a tough run home, Melbourne. Steins and Tunbridge. Tunbridge doing well so far in those duels. Gets the front position again. Again, not a decisive tap out. Eichold getting the front position. Looks for a hand pass. Over the top, splint off. Dyson gets cannoned into by Lawson. Steins tried to kick it off the ground. Ball hustled out wide. Tingay, trip in the road. That kick barely travelling the required distance. Lawson, away he goes. Didn't kick it as well as he would have liked. Down to Nettlebeck. Nettlebeck's hand pass to Murphy. In trouble. Kelly. As Pete said before, working hard at the bottom of the pack and doing the same sort of stuff again. Well, he's an improved player, Pete, Paul Kelly. There are only two goals kicked so far, one apiece. Steins decisively, but Higgins sharked that beautifully. A centering kick by the redhead. Oh, oh. fine mark, dragged in by Doolan. Strong mark. That's an exceptionally strong mark. You see there, he is a big lad. Very stocky. And that is a strong mark from the youngster. And he's directly in front of goal. So distance should be the only problem. Kicks from just inside 50. And he's got the distance, but not the accuracy. So another behind to Sydney with just over 14 minutes left in the quarter. One, two each on this delightful day. Kick in taken by Road oh, to the outer kick. side, Tunbridge. Plenty yes. of players are there for Sydney, but it's going to be a Melbourne free kick as Don forecast, and it will be taken by Jimmy Steins, just left of half back. Steins to centre wing. He had an option of two players, Darren Cuthbertson being one on the left foot. He has found line. Gee, they've got some talent on the forward line, Melbourne, particularly this man, Lyon Bennett flies. Oh, almost took a good mark. 
The Swans working hard to get it away. That was Lewis to Neil Cordy. Oh, look at that. Higgins. Tremendous play by Higgins. But except the, it's a bad hand pass in the end to Eichold. Eichold goes short. And he has found Earl Spaulding is deep down in the forward line. Well, they've got some big fellas down on that forward line. You look at Spaulding and Bennett. You've got Lyon also Djakovic. And there's Spaulding taking a chest mark. A good pass from Eichold. Now the Melbourne supporters, Don, will have their hearts in their mouths here. Because although he kicks some miraculous goals at times, uh, kicking accurately is not his strength. It's directly in front from 30 metres, Earl Spaulding, and he drifts it. Did he sneak it in? I think he did. It is a goal. Back into the centre, 14 plays eight. Lyon and Spaulding, the goal kickers for Melbourne. And we'll see another bounce just wide of the centre circle. Barry Mitchell Barry's looking right. worse for wear. I think he might have got one a trifle low there in that scrimmage. An accident. Doesn't make it hurt any less. Huge bounce. Steins taps down. Jay Viney out to the edge of the square. Some soccer tactics by Melbourne. The quick kick coming up towards the centre wing position. Oh, Spalding, beautiful hip and shoulder. And takes the ball. Well played. And follows it up again. Ooh. Not too much science out there. Well, socket away by Athel and ultimately and that's out of bounds, so it's going to be a free kick to Melbourne and it'll be taken by Stephen Stretch more than likely. Well, you can see Melbourne are absolutely desperate and ferocious as evidenced by Spalding coming in so hard with the hip and shoulder, so they realise how important it is. Stephen Stretch, who's had an in and out season for Melbourne as well. Well, Bennett was the big fire from the back, couldn't take the mark. Carroll. Always a solid performer. Great mark taken by Stretch. Jason Dunstall would have been proud of that. Pretty good kick of the football, Stretch. Actually, he could kick this, Peter. It's not beyond him. So let's see what the South Australian can do. Kicks from outside 50, low trajectory kick. Probably won't quite make the distance. Bennett! Or Jakovic it is. Tremendous grab right in the square. And he's only played four games. Djakovic, but look at this mark. And here it is. We just see Djakovic getting the ride there and coming up from behind. A great mark. So from point blank range, he'll get Melbourne's third goal. So Lyon Spalding and now Djakovic, the goal kickers for the Demons. 3-2 to 1-2 at the SCG. Well, he could have kicked eight last week, the man on screen. He only finished with three goals, but he had five points. He was one of Melbourne's better players. They didn't have too many good players last week. This is his fourth game of AFL football. A little at sea in his first couple. He started to get the feel last week, and just judging by this early in this quarter, he's starting to come to grips with it. Viney and Kelly at it once again on the edge of the square on the centre wing. Two goals the margin. Melbourne, terrific start. The Swans go forward. Higgins has had a fine season. A quick kick by Lewis up towards the forward pocket. Road races it to the line and puts it over. Been very consistent this year, Peter Road, the man on screen. Well, he's a good player. He came across from Carlton. Couldn't quite uh, keep a regular place in the Carlton side. Here's Tunbridge versus Steins. Oh, some interference in that ruck duel. Kelly, quick kick. Jay Vining, oh, back in front of goal. Could be dangerous. Stretch takes it over the line. Just over 10 minutes of play left in this first quarter. There's a couple of young Swan supporters hoping that they can kick on. And certainly they could do with three or four really good uh, key position players. Here's Tunbridge. Doolan chance to use his strength his socket off the ground but it's grabbed by Jay Viney to the halfback line a pack of players wrestling for this ball and hits the deck Tim goes into field with Higgins hand pass here's Thrip from 50 meters to the square no mark it was dropped by Kelly now was it a free kick no as Road takes it to the line and over now that might have been out in the full it was Pete so it'll be a free kick coming up here to the Swans and it's Jason Love. Now, he's the sort of guy who'll kick this. He does some unpredictable things. Oh, no, it's not his kick. 
They would have been better off with Love taking that, I would think. Jim West. Now he's going the banana kick from the boundary line. Let's it'll be a miraculous kick. And what's he done? It might be behind. I think it is. And there's West back in the side. The Swans, 1-3, trail Melbourne 3-2. Not a big crowd here today and uh, under absolutely perfect conditions. So there must be a few out in the harbour, I think, Pete. I think so. Peter Road to kick in, nine minutes left in the quarter. Ball knocked forward, in fact, towards the outer wing. Higgins and Cuthbertson. Higgins gets there first. Lawson gets around Eichold, but only just Tingay intercepting for Melbourne. Cuthbertson again, just about dragged off it. Did well to get his kick and boots it up towards half forward. Gary Lyon, Viney, spears the pass into Bennett and he'll get the distance from there. It's unfortunate for three-piece uh, slipped at the critical moment and allowed Lyon to get in and take that mark from Watch that out. kick of Cuthbertson's. How high he gets his boot up in the follow-through. Darren oh. Bennett, head high. That's how he gets those great distances with the kick. Drifted away a little bit at the last minute there for only one behind. Real hamstring stretches. Oh, aren't they? It's a classical kicking style, isn't it, Peter? It is perfect. So Bernard Tui to bring the ball back into play. One of the veterans in the Swan side. Signed from Geelong with Bolton and Williams. In fact, quite a few years ago now. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. Everyone's covered. He did well in the end. Sometimes those kicks can come unstuck. Carroll now. Booming punt kick towards centre field. Love it. Tingay. From just off the edge of the square. Kicks long. Djakovic the target. Djakovic and Tui doing battle. This time it's Tui to win out. And Tui hugs the boundary line with the kick. And there's the boundary line. Gary Lyon. Shoots the hand pass out of the former North Melbourne player Paul Bryce. Couldn't handle it that well. And Thripp has taken the ball over the line. And it will be thrown in about 55 metres from the Melbourne goal. Well, Bryce is playing a centre-half back. And it's always good to see Backman running down like he did then. Adelaide got a couple in Smart and Maynard who do it. There's not too many others in the AFL that do it Tun consistently. Tunbridge. Under Kelly. Right on the boundary line on the outer side. Gets around Jay Viney. Looks for Athorn. A long hand pass. So can the Swans build something out of this? Love. A kick up towards half forward. But there are Melbourne players everywhere. The Swans forward line in disarray. Obst. And the Demons go forward again through Dyson. Oh, dropping Jakovic the ball. Looking for the free kick. Dropping, dropping the, the ball is correct on Scott. In 50. I think he might have mouthed off. Well, he did that last week in the match against Hawthorne, Jakovic. Yeah, the ball down on the ground. Good tackle by Tui. That was a correct decision, wasn't it? And gets the just reward. So under seven minutes left in the quarter. This one's needing a couple of goals before siren time. Terry Thripp looking for a short option here. He's determined to pass it. Oh, kicked it straight to stretch. Todd Miney goes back to Peter Road. He measures the kickoff, looking for Spalding, and that was a little bit lucky for the Swans because there were three Melbourne players against one Swan, and it was a poor kick. Centre wing. 3-3, three, three, the Demons lead the Swans 1-3. So a 12-point margin. Here's Simon Eichel to Dyson. Dyson kicks into the man running towards him. That was Aethorn. Not, not much support for Aethorn. Now there is. Kelly was there. And Dennis Carroll, good play by Carroll. Up to the half forward line. West outmaneuvered by Road. Road will take this to the line. You can bet on it. And over it goes. It's deep in that forward pocket for the Swans. Jason Love on camera. Peter Road. Good defensive play then. Now Tunbridge will do the ruck work here against Steins. Now the idea would be for Tunbridge to try and hook it over the back in front of goal. The Swans a chance here. Round the corner goes Jason Love. Bounces and over the line and through for a behind. It's almost like one of those uh, scissor kicks you see in soccer then, wasn't it? 1-4 Sydney. Melbourne 3-3. Three, three. Five and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Been a good term for Melbourne so far. Bit slow. Obviously had Lovett on the other side, the opposite side by himself. 
Steins was the target. Stretch robes it well at the back. He'll give it out to Jay Viney. Viney with a long hand pass. Cuthbertson couldn't handle it again. Carroll nearly took his head off. Stephen Tingay. A centering kick from him. And Jakovic, strong grab. Well, they're setting their forward up well, uh, forward line up well, Melbourne. There's a lot of room for these guys to move in. We'll soon Jakovic and also Bennett moving on leads and getting the ball. And that was a good kick by Tingay. It was actually good movement in the end by Melbourne. And Jakovic will kick from about 45 metres out. Again, a low trajectory kick. And I think has drifted away to the near side for only one behind. So Melbourne could be a lot further ahead. Three goals, four to one four. They lead by 18 points. Two are kicking the ball. The required two metres from himself. Picks it up again, follows through, kicks up towards the centre wing position. Now they're to see Tingo take a good mark over the top of Mitchell. And did he play on? Well, two, he had no one leading for him. Then he had to kick long. So it was bad play by the Swans. Steins having a good deal in the ruck so far with Tunbridge. Good punch away there by Bayes. Players of both sides looking for a free kick for holding the ball, but the ball was hustled out the sides, and we'll see a bounce about 20 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Just over four minutes of play left before quarter time. Bennett to do the ruck work. Taps it down. That was good play by Bennett to Jakovic. Jakovic turns on the left foot, hooks a goal, and another behind on the board to his personal tally. And, of course, the Melbourne score... So we waste a few opportunities. 3-5. One, five. Goal, one goal, three he's kicked. And last week, 3-5 against Hawthorne. It's interesting too, Peter. He always goes onto that left foot, doesn't he? He tacks the ball and turns sharply onto the left. Pivoting on the right. Trip across to Athorn. Athorn to centre wing. Nettlebeck took the front position. Jay Viney. Tingay to the half forward line. Neil Cordy sets himself and marks. A good solid defender, Cordy. Doesn't miss those too often, does he, Pete? He's had a good year. Mark Bayes, probably the best kick in the Sydney side. Higgins, short of left centre wing. The forward line a little bit open now, if they can build on this. See what Lewis can do. Good pass, uh, gleefully accepted by Nettlebeck, but he's right on the boundary line. It's the long way home. Good centering kick might be required from there. He goes in short. Now, he's found Bayes, as I said, probably the best kick in the side. I don't think even he could kick it from there. Centering kick. Stein's got two hands on it. Yates dragged off the ball. Lovett applies the tackle on Kelly. And it's going to be a bounce. We should mention, I think, uh, Peter and Don, that Kappa did play in the reserves. But, uh, well, we didn't really see that much of him, did we? No. Tunbridge and Stein's again. Snapshot by Mitchell. And one behind. Comes up for Sydney. Two and a half minutes left in the quarter. 1-5 to 3-5. Again, three goals the difference. Really no breeze here this afternoon. Bays at the back. Stretch does better. Long hand pass. Jay Viney just off the centre circle. Kicks down to Bennett and Jakovic territory. Mark missed by Thrip. Jakovic boot the ball with the right foot this time. Oh, he's and done. he's put it through. Three goal margin now for the Demons and Jakovic showing a lot of class up there on that forward line. Now has Thrip on him. Tui going on to Gary Lyon. That was a pretty quick change made. There's a hand pass from Nettlebeck. Oh, that's in the back on Higgins. Umpire didn't think so. Jay Viney tries to crash the ball forward. Players pouncing on top of it. It'll be a bounce. Tui on Gary Lyon, they've got some really good forwards down there at Melbourne. Lyon, Jakovic, Bennett, Spalding was there for a while. Now, centre wing, Stein, beaten for it by Tunbridge. And the umpire said that was Shepparding against Tunbridge. Steins to the half forward line, that's a good pass. He's found Cuthbertson, Melbourne looking pretty good. Cuthbertson to the forward line, or oh, Jakovic could have been a free kick to him. He was shoved out of it behind the play. He's got it. Alan Jakovic on the left foot, hooks a goal. Tripped back with the flight. And really, I thought there was interference against Jakovic. He was pushed right out of the contest. Very early. Wasn't it? Mm. And off goes Tui again. He loves doing that. Oh, now Bernard. he's caught. No, he, neck. he was neck. in a hand pass. Now, as soon as Swans player goes down, 
It'll be a throw-in. Actually, two he was taken a bit high then by Gary Lyon. Well, let's have a What's look. What's this there? Yeah, Ooh, yeah he ducked high. the head and was yeah, caught high. Still a bit too high, Pete. So boundary throw in left forward pocket for the Demons. Eichold. Snapshot is off target, out of bounds or behind. And out of bounds is the story. So let off for Sydney again. Not been doing all the attacking, Cordy. Oh, oh gee, that could have almost come unstuck, <laughs> Bays. Page under Waythorn from the centre square. Yeah, a little nudge out there by Brett Lovett. Yates. That's not a good kick by the Demon defender. Plenty of height, but not too much else. Tingay goes for the boundary line. Well, Cuthbert's it. Well, there's the siren to end the first quarter. Good one for Melbourne. And the Demons holding a handy lead of four goals, six to the Sydney Swans. One goal, five, 11 points. doing it fairly easily so far two goals to Djakovic one to Sporting and one to Lyon in the first quarter out of their tally of four goals six and for Sydney Jason Love their only goal kicker out of their tally of one goal five today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1991 AFL Premiership season two sporting reminders coming up soon the NBA All-Stars clash it's on Saturday the 13th of July check your local guide for details of their coverage of that game motor racing the Australian Touring Car Championship moves to round eight at Lakeside Sunday July the 14th that's deal day again check your local guide for details of our coverage Sydney Swans breaking up John Northey still addressing the players as they are about to take up their positions for the resumption of play Cameron Williams what do they have to say well a very angry Swans coach Cole Kinnear spent the whole quarter time huddle blasting anyone forward of the centre line. He feels that his forwards aren't leading to the ball and wasting the opportunities created further down the field for them. And uh, he also pointed out that they're making basic fundamental skill errors all over the ground. That's got to change, obviously. Not much out of the Melbourne huddle. They seem pretty happy with the status quo. The bad news is Glenn Lovett does have a broken wrist. Thanks, Cameron. Yes, that is bad luck because Glenn was having a magnificent season, one of the most improved players down there. And so that's going to sideline him for quite a few weeks. Let's look at the statistics on to quarter time. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Melbourne have really controlled this game, yet Sydney have nearly had as many possessions, mainly because of the fact that Melbourne have gone a little bit longer with their kicks, and that's good to see. Centre breaks fairly even, and so are the hitouts favouring Sydney just. So really not much out of those uh, stats. Second quarter begins at the SCG with Melbourne leading by 19 points. Sydney going to the right in the second term. Knocked down by Steins. Chance for Carroll. Spins around, kicks the ball up towards half forward. Fine mark taken by Brett Lovett. Then Lovett, of course, off the ground with that uh, injury. And we've just heard, of course, a broken wrist. So that's very bad luck for the Melbourne side. Good play, Cuthbertson. Umpire has blown the whistle, though. It's going to be a free kick. It was good effort just the same because he was pinned under by Dale Lewis and then really threw himself out to get Murphy. At least he retarded the player and that was a good effort. David Murphy on right centre wing. Sydney forward line again very crowded and all too easy for Jimmy Steins to take that mark down there. Is it across to his teammate down there in uh, oh. Rice. Murphy again, same position, right centre wing. Around Gary Lyon but only just good tackle applied. Tui barges his way through. Kicks inside 50, two on one in favour of the Swans, but the ball is fisted over the boundary line for a throw in 50 metres from goal. Oh, good well, effort again by Rode. Peter Rode punching that ball away. But oh, what they can do for a good forward, the Swans. Gee, they fall down badly up forward. Tunbridge, Eichol, has to get rid of it quickly. Kelly, likewise. Love looking for a free kick from Lovett. None there. Bryce, Lawson, close to the boundary line. And the ball and the player both over. Sydney probably gaining about 25 metres. Throw in 25 metres from goal. Badly need a couple of quick goals, Sydney. They're not out of this match. They just don't seem to be getting anywhere. Steins at the back. Lewis couldn't do much with it. Eichold gets the Demons out of danger. Now their forward line by sharp contrast is very open. And Gary Lyon should be able to take advantage of this. Off the stretch, a magnificent kick from that player. 
up to the forward pocket. Djakovic a little bit of a nudge out. And he has been paid the mark. It's a clever mark. My word. Good use of the body. Used his bulk to advantage. Now he's kicked two goals so far. Two goals, three. He runs around. Shoots at goal. And that's just a score, I think. One behind. So another point to the Demons. Kicked by Alan Djakovic. 4-7. Sydney 1-5. They really should be a lot further in front. The amount of play that they've had in Melbourne. Bernard Tui to the half back line. Jay Viney caught. Gets in a hand pass. The ball rolls over the line at half forward. But the Swans really aren't giving their teammates the, the support we normally expect to see from Sydney up here. Normally they have many, many players round the ball. Today they've leave, been leaving it to one out at times. There's Spalding Court. Kelly quick kick to the centre of the ground. This is Graham Yates trying to crash his way through. Murphy goes, ooh, a wild boot went into that pack. That's a better effort from Graham Yates. And it's good to see his teammates go over and congratulate him. At least he's kept honest when he's playing in the back pocket, Yates. He's insinuating he's dishonest everywhere else, Don. Ball at centre wing. It's socket off the ground towards the half forward line. Here's Murphy. He's playing well. Murphy to the half forward line. Obbs back with the flight of the ball. Couldn't take it. Jay Viney to Todd Viney. Spalding cleverly taps it towards half forward, but Higgins races after. He's got two men to beat here. Ishold caught with the ball. Melbourne take it forward through Cuthbertson on the left foot. And the ball rolls over the line. But Melbourne, just a little bit more desperation than the Swans at the moment. It'll be a throw in in that forward pocket on Melbourne's forward line. 4 7 Melbourne, Swans 1 5. Right next to the behind post. Tunbridge over the top. Higgins. Ball out of bounds. Almost in the identical position. And uh, Higgins has either lost a shoe or he's found one. <laughs> <laughs> Still very crowded in there. And finally, little Barry Mitchell gets the Sydney team out of danger and lands the ball almost on the white line. So close to centre wing. Kelly number 14. Of course, a famous jumper in the red and white. Worn for many years with distinction when the club was South Melbourne, of course, by Bob Skilton. Viney. And it goes to Jay Viney now. Good long kick up towards the full forward position. And Darren Bennett. Just too big on that occasion, wasn't yes. he, Bennett? Caught he did the right thing, and you really can't blame him. He was in front. Now, look, there he is in front. Do you see there the chest? There wasn't an actual push out. It was just the use of the body and the chest. That was a great mark by Bennett. For his first goal, point blank range, and gets it. Very well at the moment. 5 7 to 1 5. Swans are not playing well. Mitchell to the half forward line. Lovett's doing well. So is Graham Yates. Yates looks for stretch. More we'll stretch ran past the ball. Well done by Yates to punch it on the stretch again. Good play by Jamie Lawson. Allows Mitchell to come in and take it on the left foot. Now, where are their forwards? Again, that strong Melbourne defence doing well. Players lying on top of the ball. Jason Love punches it to the pocket. Here's Barry Mitchell. Shoots a goal and kicks it through to a great goal. So Mitchell has taken the spot on the 2-5, trailing the Demons 5-7. The Swan Edge just about getting cold over there. Good effort by Mitchell, one of their best players this afternoon. He's starting to kick a few goals too, Barry, this year. Unfortunately... Last year he was hampered by injuries, but he's a courageous, a gutsy little player. He had a few operations over the summer, rectified those injuries. He's having a relatively injury-free season so far. As they make him change the swans, Love off and Kerr coming on. Well, back into the centre, and of course, around that centre field area, they badly miss uh, Williams. Kicked up for Melbourne by Dyson towards half forward, only as far as Tui. Tui looks for a lead across the centre wing, and there he is, Kerr. It was Don Sin has just come onto the ground. <laughs> he did get boot the ball eventually, but it must have been pretty close to holding the ball. He tries again. Ball scrambled out of the pack with a quick kick. 
Carroll. <laughs> Todd Barney looking for out of bounds on the full. I think he's a super optimist. I wonder how fit Dennis Carroll is because he's a bit slow to get up on that occasion. Boundary throw in just on Melbourne's attacking side of centre. Tunbridge doing well. Tui. Cuthbertson leaves it for Lyon. Looping hand pass over the top. Athorne. Back to Carroll. Who again kicks long. But not a well directed kick. Dwarf Steins cop one from Nettlebeck. The umpire says no free kick. Love it. Short hand pass up towards the centre wing position. Higgins going through a very solid lead. Back to Athorne. Not too many options left for him. Went close to the boundary line. Finally on the end of the hand pass is Nettlebeck from Kelly. Kicks inside 50. The Melbourne defence working overtime now. West got two hands to the ball. Dyson over to Jimmy Steins. And Steins clears the ball away from Doolan. Eichel ridden into the ground. No chance to get rid of it. He'll get a free kick anyway for in the back. Is that a repeat? No. That's not a free kick. <laughs> that hey, was caught it? holding the ball. Well, play on decision should have been. Yes, play on could have been. Tinge out yeah. of bounds. There is no way known he rode him into the ground. Then that was just a good, strong tackle. You can hear the crowd the now. Well, I think they know a little bit more than the umpires at times. The, the Sydney crowd, of course, they'd be against the umpire. Oh. Spalding taps down. Lawson fumbles. <laughs> and it's going to be another ball up. Well, I, I think it's annoying when you see a, <laughs> a guy put on a perfect tackle and get penalised. It's, it is annoying. So, ball up. Close to the boundary line on the outer side. Spalding had a big swing and got no result. Lyon, excellent hand pass. Three Melbourne players are there. They could have raffled it. Socket off the ground by Jay Viney. Cordy. He needs some sort of support down there. Tried for Bays. Lyon takes the hand pass. Bennett does the shepherding. Likewise, Flintoff. Cordy again. A short kick inside the centre square. Love it. Cuthbertson. Right on 50. One on one duel and Tui goes for the boundary line to get it away from Jakovic. Cordy dragged down. Tui taken high, surely. And the now is now going to pay it. Bernard Tui, as we can see there, a great camera shot. He was looking around, appealing to the umpire. There it is, he's taken high. We just didn't see him looking at the umpire. That was by Kevin Dyson. Bernard Tui always battles hard in defence. He brings it to the half back line. And that's a good mark by Steins. Jimmy Steins, he wants to lay off a hand pass. He does to stretch. Beautiful kick up in front of goal. Danger here for the oh, Swans, but mark. what a good mark in front by Cordy. Well, he did that earlier, but uh, Bennett took the mark. He did it well then, uh, Cordy, Neil Cordy. A good high mark. Now, he's gone across the face to Athorn. Oh, not a good kick by Athorn. He had options, and he kicked it straight to Eichold. Simon Eichel bring it in towards half forward. Beautiful kick. Lyon sets himself centre oh, of the back, a but a good one. mark over the top by Tunbridge going back to the flight of the ball. Brad Tunbridge, oh, shocking kick. Straight off the side of the boot and over the line at half forward for Melbourne. So another boundary throw in. That's the best part of the ground today in the sun. Magnificent conditions. Stein seems to be bleeding from somewhere near the nose or the forehead area too, I noticed, just looking at him through the glasses. There he is. Battle scarred. Yes, it's quite a nasty one, that. It might look worse than it is, of course. Tunbridge. Ball scooped out. Knock on by Higgins. Trying to go through as Kerr. <laughs> he nearly went through the roof of the, uh, the player's bunker down there. The two number 17s being picked up by Brett Lovett. Glenn Lovett off with an injured wrist, which we understand is broken. Steins wins this one. Taps it down to Flintoff. Back to Steins. The big man's pretty mobile, isn't he? Or oh, Murphy nearly runs into a brick wall. A real up and under kick is the end result. Two on one in favour of Melbourne. The ball knocked over the boundary line on centre wing. And we'll see a throw in again. 30 is Bryce, 20 is West. This thigh pad's becoming very popular. Or bicycle shorts or whatever they're wearing. Flintoff, a high kick to the 50 metre line. The ball fisted into the arms 
of Stephen Stretch, who goes goalwards, but he's off target over the head of Djakovic and three for only one behind. So with 14 minutes left before half time, it's 5 8 to 2 5, 17. Plays 38. Really, they haven't uh, kicked clear Melbourne by as far as they should. Tui to Athorn. Been a much travelled football. Oh, an ordinary kick by Athorn. He kicked it straight to Lyon, but Lyon ran past the ball. Here's Kelly. Kept it in play and a clever kick. West. Oh, over the shoulder on West. And the umpire's going to throw it in. The Sydney crowd not happy. Steins to do the ruck work against Tunbridge. Tunbridge front position. He's watching for Steins. Steins comes over and misses the ball altogether. Here's Cuthbertson to the half forward line. Tripp was in front. Bennett was there. Well done, Bennett. Darren well, Bennett. it was good play by Bennett to tap it on to Simon Eichel. Now he's looking for Lyon. Lyon caught oh, with it. Dropping. Loses it. The Swans come away. And it's Tunbridge receiving. That was Page who gave it to him. Tunbridge to the half forward line. Lewis oh, just took his eyes off the ball and allowed Stretch to take it. There were three Melbourne players there. Stretch running with the flight. Well, he's lost it in the bounce, but he's got backup support. Oh, gee, the Swans are not playing well. Melbourne are doing all the backing up as Jay Viney goes to the half forward line. He's looking for Tingay. Wasn't a good kick by Viney. A lot of errors. You can see Tingay by himself and just could have popped it across. There was no pressure at all on him. In fact, it was a bad kick. So boundary throw it out of sight. Melbourne's right half forward flank. Spalding and Bays. And it comes to Kelly. Again, an up and under kick, and Steins did well to almost take the mark there. Stretch once more. Plenty of options for him. Cuthbertson had to get rid of it quickly. Todd Viney to Bryce. Mitchell finally with the tap on. The Swans slowly making some ground. They had a good kick here. Well, this man could probably do that. Carroll. Well, that was good vision to get it back to Mitchell. Mitchell kicks into space on the forward line. West. Haven't seen too much of him today. Can he score a goal here? The right footer is close. I don't think close enough. And as deep as uh, Evan Opst. Almost goes over the fence. 5 8 to 2 6. Good handball by uh, the captain, Dennis Carroll, in the centre of the ground. Getting across to Mitchell. He was an excellent hand pass. That it probably deserved a little bit better. He's really struggling for goals. This is Peter Road. Spalding. Well, he brings down the mark. It'll be a good grab. Jay Viney. And it goes to Dyson. Kicks the half forward. Cordy. Tingay around Higgins. You'll have a shot at goal. The ball touched off the boot. And a chance for Tui to do some tidying up work. Goes for the boundary line. And it landed just inside it. Half forward for Melbourne. The Swans desperately trying to keep them out. They're having trouble down their forward end. Melbourne look far more dangerous. Socket off the ground. Grabbed by Higgins. His kick has gone straight to Earl Spalding. Spalding on the left foot normally kicks pretty well. He puts it out in front of Steins. No mark. Oh, that was a half volley. Surely. My goodness me. Well, can you believe that's been paid a mark? Have a look at this. Look at the position of the umpire. <laughs> you give it back to the upright. Oh. <laughs> Neil Cordy cannot believe it. Let's have another look. A half volley. Oh, my goodness. Well, Steins will kick from 40 metres. And I think he's missed so poetic justice. And the Sydney crowd wrapped. But that really was poor umpire. 18 to 39. Under 10 minutes left in the half. Well, Sydney can count themselves lucky to be kind of, kind of be in this game on the scoreboard because 21 points behind. They've been blitzed by Melbourne. Melbourne really should be further in front. Yes, agreed, Don. Bays. Low trajectory kick up towards midfield. Not too much happening for Sydney there. Bryce taken out of it by Carroll, who did well to get a kick. Jay Viney off the ground. And two Sydney Swans players almost collided. Mitchell from Lawson. Now to Dyson. Dyson on centre wing. 
goes long with the kick up towards full forward. And there he is again, Cordy, uh, taking a great mark. Still playing in front. He was outmarked, as Don pointed out before, when Bennett came from behind. But he's done very well down there. Mm, look at that. Dyson, or the mark he so should have taken. He has taken it, but... Fair way from goal. Spins around quickly. Two on two oh. down there. That's a great mark. Well, it's the first one he's really taken, jumping off the ground. We saw him out bustle Cordy earlier, but he does get up very high for his marks. Bennett, but Big he man. just doesn't hold them. Look at the way he gets up this time. And finally, he's held one with one arm. Perhaps he should go for more with just the one arm. He's kicked one, Darren Bennett. And I would say he's now kicked two. Back to the centre, and, well... They need something going for them, the Swans. I'd move Mark Bays to centre-half forward straight away because they've got nothing down there at the moment. That's Flintoff to the full forward line. Danger again because Bennett has taken his position in front of the pack for a strong mark. Yes, well, he's figured, hasn't he, in the last, last couple of minutes? He's a big man. The other thing with Bennett is he's got a good football brain. Well, he's going for goal number three. From directly in front, he stabs and puts it through. So Melbourne kicked well clear of the Sydney Swans. They've moved their score along to 7-9. Sydney remaining stagnant on 2-6. Well, he uses his body well, Bennett, on occasions. When he gets the ball, he'll always endeavour to do something with it. That's what I refer to as a good football brain. Here he is using his body well. He's in front. He goes up well. It's his third goal. And the ball coming this is the second quarter. Three goals to Darren Bennett, two to Jakovic, the main goal kickers for Melbourne. Demons doing it oh, with a little bit of ease at the moment. Viney. Mitchell's kick was likewise smothered. And it'll be another bounce, almost in the centre circle. Seven and a half minutes before half time. Tunbridge. He's done well at the bounces and throw into this afternoon against Jimmy Steins. Much more mobile player. Speaking of mobile, Yates gets under that pretty quickly. Goes for the short pass and finds Cuthbertson. Cuth uh, that's better. Get the teeth back in. <laughs> well, fine mark to it. And lands rather awkwardly. The very lines off the ground for Melbourne, too. We just saw Luke Beveridge flying. Now, line is going over. He's got the sock down on his left leg, so there's either a calf or a knee problem. He's moving very slowly to the ball before. Right? Back with Bernard Tui. So he's kicked towards right half forward. Mark taken by Lewis. Lewis goes for a short pass. He's got an absolute shot. Almost, almost as good a mark as Jimmy Steins. But not paid that time by the umpire. And hence the Bronx cheers from the crowd. Dwyer's on the ground floor of the Sydney Swans, number 33. And it will be a throw in about 25 metres from goal. They're working on the hamstring. It looks as if the hamstring is being worked on of Gary Lyon. He's lying flat on his stomach. Tunbridge taps down. Lovett, O'Dwyer, Kelly, all on top of it, and another bounce to take place. And let's hope Gary Lyons, okay. We've already lost Glenn Lovett, of course, for the duration of the match. Steins' hand pass is effective. Brett Lovett's kick up towards half back. Marking contest there, none paid. Higgins. And the ball taken out of bounds in front of Cuthbertson. And another boundary throw in to follow. There he is, Gary Lyon. And looks in a little bit of bother, Don, doesn't he? Yes, doesn't look too good, Pete. And they can be rather awkward to shake off two hamstring injuries. I think it would be a hamstring the way those exercises are going. Or... Mitchell gets tagged pretty quickly. Oof, it's pretty rough in there. Well, actually, hamstring injuries can really wreck a guy's career. Remember uh, Phil Kelly? He North came Melbourne. to North Melbourne from Western Australia. Well, he had chronic hamstring problems there. Gary Lyons in a bad way there at left hamstring. So he's in trouble, I'd say. Here's uh, Dennis Carroll. Broke the tackle. Play on. Hooks it to the pocket. He paid the advantage, the umpire. And Carroll has kicked it out on the full. Or is it down the ground? Or what's it going to be? Now, that was a mark. Now, hang on. This is interesting. I don't think... Well, he's playing... No, the umpire paid, said play on. I thought that ball crossed the line. Yeah, well, freaking anyway. Well, that's what he's paying. Obviously, road to the half-back line. 
Swans players desperately oh, head down and in after the ball. Here's Barry Mitch. He couldn't believe it. He was clear. Oh, look at that. Bad kick. Straight to stretch. They've got no idea around the Swans up forward as Yates takes it wide and finds Brett Lovett and Melbourne have loose men everywhere. A couple of options. Here's Jay Mine. He's got plenty of time to wait for it to bounce. Back he goes to Todd Viney. The chip passes on, and here's Steins marking at half forward, 40 metres from goal, and he can go short if he wants to. No, he's electing to have a set shot. Looks like he's gone a few rounds with Jeff Fennick, hasn't he? Well, if he did, he'd probably get the decision. <laughs> here's Jimmy Steins from directly in front. Well, it might never make the distance this. It hasn't, and it was touched and over the line. So a poor kick that by the big ruckman. It was also a good effort by Steins because he contested uh, a marking contest here with Tunbridge and then got down there pretty quickly. So 17 shots to eight. The story on the scoreboard is pretty accurate. Murphy on the edge of the centre square. Cordy, one of their best players today. Big pack of players down there. Graham Yates doing the backup at the rear of the pack. Lawson tackles him. Did he have the ball? Jay Viney will look for a hand pass. And for whom that was intended. Peter Road takes it. Knocked uh, back by Mitchell. Love it. Who lacks nothing in courage. Taken to the ground by Tui Eichol. Does the tidying up work for Melbourne. Effective hand pass. On to Todd Viney on centre wing. Cuthbertson. Next to the players interchange area. Awkward pass. Awkward bounce. Page getting oh. taken under with a high tackle. And nothing for it from the umpire. He's holding his head. Well, Sydney made a few changes. They've got Tui now. Here's the uh, free kick. Page putting the arm out, but two is on the forward line. They've got now Bays on the back line and also Kerr on the back line. Knocked down by Tingay, accepted by Lawson. Lawson back to Murphy. Murphy's hand pass taken by Higgins on the CUB sign. And a centering kick from him up towards half forward. Almost a mark dragged in by Tui. Yates back to midfield. And Tui's hurt. Here's Bays. Mitchell, big chance here for the Swans. Let's see what they can do with it. Barry Mitchell from 40 metres, races in the goal. Fires away, swings it back, right through the middle for a goal. Two goals to Barry Mitchell and one to Jason Love. The only goal kickers for Sydney so far. Mitchell, one of their best players this afternoon. He needs some support. Steins up oh. high. Tunbridge stayed on the ground. Awkward bounce for him. Stretch. Now it comes out to Spalding. He wobbles the kick up towards full forward. They'll need to clear it here. Thrip will do just that. Goes to the centre wing. Higgins and Cuthbertson. Good tackle by the Melbourne defender. Back it comes to Beveridge. Ooh. The hand pass. Intercepted by Carroll who tries to barge his way through. Good tackle by Flintoff. Melbourne with both their reserves on now. Lion sidelines maybe for the game. And certainly Glenn Lovett sidelines for obviously more than the game if he has a broken wrist. And Doolan going off for the Sydney Swans and Love coming back on. Spalding Taps down. Kerr. Carroll. Carroll kicks to centre wing. Over the top was Lewis. Now there is a whistle on uh, play. It's going to be a Melbourne kick. And it's coming back to you. It's half four. I can see what that was for. It's taken by Eichold. Obviously something off the ball that I didn't see. Kicks that in front of goal for Bennett. And Darren Bennett is blitzing them down there in this quarter. He's kicked three, and I think, Don, you said all in this quarter, didn't you? That's right, and he was always going to take this, Mark Bennett, because of the way the ball was floating through the air, it was going left to right, and Bennett, as we saw there initially, was running in that direction without any real opposition. The player's on the wrong side of him. And the goal umpire moved across marginally, and That's in the case, only miss. one flag. Yes, from 25 metres out, he seems to do better when he's about 50. So one minute left in the half, 7-11 to 3-6. Well, they've been let off the hook, the Swans, a little bit. Melbourne should be a lot further in front. Bays. Jim West. He hasn't had many touches. That was Thrip. Now it's Paul Bryce. Has it taken away? Kelly. To the half-forward line. Poor disposal again. And the Swans kicking, general field kicking, has been very, very ordinary in this match. And you can't do that against Melbourne because Melbourne have a pretty strong defence. We need precision kicking to the forward line. Ball hits the deck. Lawson's hardly been sighted. We've had a lot of uh, ordinary players. Murphy's been an excellent play. Oh, good mark. Look. 
Yeah, yeah. he could kick this, Peter. He's only about 45 metres. He'll let it go from about 48, 50 metres out, Lewis. Yes, he is a good kick of the football, a left footer. It's a good mark. Aided by the fact that Mitchell did impede Yates in going for that ball, so nobody really got off the ground except Lewis. Time clock ticking down. There's the siren. Now they need this badly. The Swans. Lewis will kick as Don Scott. Oh, he's kicking right on 50. Out to the left. Swings it back. A beautiful. Right through the middle. What a hand on the Swans. Right on the half time siren. Half time here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Melbourne, a very good effort. 7 11 53. And leading the Sydney Swans 4 6, a total of 30. The third quarter coming up shortly at the Sydney Cricket Ground. 4 6 30, Sydney, Melbourne, and 7 11 53. Cameron Williams, did you get into the rooms at half time? Yes, I did, Peter. Gary Lyon is expected to play in this quarter. He's actually on the bench. He'll start on the bench, but they have taken the ice off what was a corked thigh. He got a knee in the back of his thigh, and uh, they do expect him to be available if required. So that's good news for Melbourne. John Northy made the point that, the, that his team is letting the Swans back into this match. They just seem to have a little bit of lapse of concentration towards the end of that quarter and let the Swans sneak back within 23 points uh, after doing a lot of tackling and pressure to keep the Swans contained early in the term. Uh, actually, Cole Kinnear made the same point in reference to his men. He wants them to show a little bit more commitment. In fact, a lot more commitment. He's not very happy with them at all. We should see their forward line restructured yet again. And if you think Dennis Carroll looks a little tired, his wife Ingrid gave birth to a little baby girl, Astrid, last night. So I guess Dennis didn't get a lot of sleep. OK, thanks, Cameron. Let's check the individual player statistics now of some of the guys that have been in the play. Jay Barney, first of all, Don. Yes, well, Jay's playing half back, and it's good to see him come back in the form. He had a good game in his first one against Geelong, a little slack last week, and uh, he's now starting to come back again. Barry Mitchell burrowing in as usual, 12-2, and two, another good effort from Barry. And Darren Bennett, well, it was a better quarter as far as the statistics go for Bennett, namely he kicked three goals in that the second quarter. Second half from the SCG, Melbourne leading by 23 points. After Dale Lewis kicked a goal right on the half-time siren, Page not able to get clear, Todd Viney likewise. The ball scrambled out the back of the pack, West. He had a stinted full forward in the second term and couldn't really do much. Beveridge has kicked out towards the centre wing position. And Jay Viney again, good game. He goes long into full forward to Bennett and Jakovic territory. And the ball fisted away by Mark Bays, and it's rushed through for one behind, therefore. So it makes a difference at even four goals now, 4-6 to 7-12. As you can see by that scoreline, Melbourne have had most of the ball on their forward line. The Swans, who have hung in, have done pretty well in that regard. Bays. In a low trajectory kick. No mark paid. Mitchell got a couple of hands to the ball. Tingo tried for a hand pass. Stein finally picks it up. And stretch takes the hand pass from Viney. It was Todd Viney. And he too has missed. And another behind to make the difference 25 points now. 7-13 to 4-6. Adwire is on the ground. Uh, Love and uh, Duel and off. Adwire is on a wing. Picking up stretch. Adwire number 33. Good knock on by Tunbridge. Tried to get it to West. Bryce is in the road though. Back it comes to Simon Eichold who kicks from a standing start. Steins. Has it knocked away by O'Dwyer? He really had to get off the ground to make an impact there. Finally, Spalding. And a little bit of luck there, but Darren Bennett on his own. Or was it good vision, Don? No, a lot of luck. Because it wasn't the best kick from Earl Spalding. He went onto the left foot and just banged it down in the direction of goal. And just so happened that Darren Bennett was by himself. Look, there's Bennett by himself. We're right out of the action. Bennett's kicked three already. And the goal here would make the difference. 31 points. Again, he gets the distance. He's got the goal. Classical kicking style of Darren Bennett. We saw a moment ago. There's Bryce tapping it down. Kerr gets it to Mitchell. Kerr again. To the pocket. Nettlebeck in front. Road at the back. But, oh, they've fallen down up forward all day. And uh, well, Kappa played in the reserves. Uh, Gary Lyon. Is the forward injury. line, Peter, or the midfield that are at fault? In this it's situation? the forward line, too. They haven't got class forwards, Don. Anyone could see that. You name me a class forward in their team. 
I'm having a lot of trouble already. The ball at half forward, and I'm not trying to be overcritical, it's just a fact. They have not got good forwards. And they make shift on their forward line. Now, Jim West has had a poor day. That's why I'd be tempted to get Bays down there and just try and liven them up Bays a little bit. You've got everywhere. You've had him down the back line because no, they were I running him much down there. Now you want him up the other I end. said he should be on the forward line now to try and liven them up. He's eighth on racing after it. He's beaten for it by Beveridge. Oh, they're doing it well, Melbourne. Beveridge to the pocket. And that's been a terrific contest between Cordy and Bennett. There's Bays now receiving. And Bays, no one moving for him. So he kicks to the wide open spaces. Now here's West. Jim West, very quiet player. Lewis in front, kicked a good goal right on the half-time siren. But it's forced over the line by Graham Yates. And he'd be delighted to be part of the senior side. He's played a few on the reserves this year, Graham Yates. Can play on the wing or in the back pocket. That was Steins. Dyson is having a wild kick. Now it's stretched, stretched to the half forward line. That's a good mark. Taken there by David Flintoff, former Hawthorne player. Good kick too to Bryce. Now Dyson, the short pass is on. Jakovic, no mark. He led well, he's got it. Swings onto the right foot. Sprints into goal and slams it through for a great goal. So Alan Jakovic has kicked his third. And Melbourne doing it on the bit. 9.13 to 4.6. It was a little bit of class the way he went about doing that. Normally he swings onto the left foot. That sign he decided to go the other way. This was a good build up by Melbourne. Firstly, Bryce going down, getting it across to Dyson. It's a good pass by Dyson. He seems There's to kick equally well with both feet, Don, doesn't he? My word, well, he is normally a right foot kick, but he showed a lot of toe when he started that corner manoeuvre. Three goals to Jakovic and four to Bennett as Viney gets the tap down. Sydney badly need an answer. Murphy may be able to provide it. Nettlebeck and Rowe. Nettlebeck's hand pass intended for and finds David Murphy. Murphy shot at goal, is off target. One behind. He's the leading goal kicker today is Barry Mitchell, a rover. Jason Love has got one, which he kicked in the first quarter. Out of the forward line, very little to write home about so far this afternoon. 20 and a half minutes left in this term. Stephen Tingo. Well, they're playing Bernard Tui on the forward line now, of course. They've shuffled them around a lot. Spalding in front of Tunbridge. Good mark. It was nearly off. Oh, Brad Tunbridge. Oh, well, that's uh, not a mark. Jakovic. Well, it's as good as Stein's. It was. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <laughs> if you had have held control of that ball, I wonder if it would have been paid. Let's take a look at it again. Well, what about Tunbridge on the mark? Letting Spaulding run around and get onto his right foot. No concentration from the big fellow. So Bennett was Tunbridge. Bennett cleverly over the top. Tried to find Ooh. Spaulding. Going down pretty solidly was Lewis. Taps the ball out wide. Cordy. Goes with a boundary line and in fact finds it in front of Stephen Stretch. And so a throw in about 50 to 55 metres out from the Melbourne goal. Demons seemingly with plenty in reserve. Tunbridge getting front posse. Steins now comes around him. Page trying to pick it up having any success and Eichold takes him over the boundary line so Sydney probably gaining about five meters in that exchange we'll do it all again same Ruckman Steins this time out the back and does better that was to Dyson Mitchell over the top good tackle applied by stretch Kelly's hand pass onto Mitchell in turn onto O'Dwyer he's caught the ball spills free dropping the ball it should be it will be Don and Tingo to take the free kick Jay Viney, Todd Viney, Eichol, Jay Viney again, no almost, Page in the road. But Melbourne have got the numbers. Cuthbertson, well tackled, the ball spills free again. Still outside 50, and it's going to be a ball up. So the Swans defending desperately, but really on the forward line. Only 4-7 for their effort so far today. And the Swans are right off the boil. They had a shocker last week against Collingwood at Victoria Park, and they've continued on today. But Melbourne really should be about 12 goals in front on the play 
Here's Leon Higgins. Beautiful kick. West, can he get there? Or oh, too slow to get there. Jim West, and he's caught. Drops it. Goes in to get it. That was good play. And excellent play by West. Really worked hard to get it to Higgins. Higgins to the pocket. And it's wide. Still in play, in fact. Now, Lovett will probably take this to the line. Very cleverly done. And disguised it well. Brett Lovett, he's played well today, Don. He's just been a good, solid player in defence. Reads the play well. Steins. Over the back, taps it to ground. Mitchell burrowing in to try and get it. Played for the free kick then, didn't get it. And over the line it goes again. A better player, Steins, when he starts to open up his hand and palm the ball. 9-13, plays 4-7. Very decisive lead this is. Played pretty well, Melbourne. Price, out to the wide open spaces. Eichel leads in the race. Sockers it away. Hot on his hammer is Leon Higgins. He might beat him to it. Oh, that was great play by Higgins. Oh, my goodness me. What in the heck was that for? Well, very lucky man, Simon Eichel. To half forward. Up the ground. Here's little Jamie Lawson. Always gone for a dangerous hand pass. On to Cordy. Good play by Cordy. Fantastic football as he brings it to the pocket. There's no one there for the Swans. Now Tui emerges out of the pack. Now he played for the free kick. Didn't get it. Grabbed by Yates. Yates to centre wing. Stretch in the perfect position here. And Steve stretches Mark. On he goes to Brett Lovett. Daisy cutting attempted pass. Racing after the ball was Page. And he puts it over the line. But what about that free kick on centre wing that... Great play by Higgins. It was good play. I still can't work out what the free kick was for. The Swans having trouble kicking goals. They kicked only 6-8 last week. The scoreboard not as flattering this afternoon, certainly so far. And now Vardy takes the hand pass from Clint off. He got one too high and he'll get a free kick. Been a good player this year, Joe, and Todd Viney. Picking up a lot of possessions. His best year, Don, wouldn't it? Well, it's his best since he's been either his first or second year. He lifted a lot of weights there for a couple of years and really bulked up and had a lot of trouble with injuries and so forth. But he's much finer. He's got a lot of courage. Luke Beveridge put on a lot of weight with uh, the bodybuilding. Uh, trimmer now. And he's missed that one, I believe. One behind. He's by Todd Viney. Picks up about 19 kicks a game, Todd Viney. And uh, as far as the VFL is concerned, he's in the top four as far as kicks go. 37 points the difference. Change being made by Cole Kinnear. Yes, young O'Dwyer coming off. He's a little inexperienced. Doolan coming back on. Doolan wanted to use his body a bit more, O'Dwyer. So Tripp kicks it. Spalding went for the specky behind. Couldn't take it. And Bay is nearly getting steamrolled down there. Flint off right on the boundary line. Looks for a hand pass. He'll try that again. This time it's a better one. He gets it away. Flint off again. Takes the hand pass from Dyson. And the Demons chain off them. Bryce now. Oh. Jakovic, a juggle. This time on the left foot. No, the right again. To Bennett. Double pronged attack working well. Bennett oh. breaks one tackle, kicks and goals. Top goal there by Bennett. 10 14 to 4 7. But uh, Melbourne doing it very, very well. Brett Lovett. Oh, seems to have plenty of time. It's in the hand pass. Paul Bryce. Yates. And he was under the hammer, grabbed by Bryce. The centre wing comes Carroll. Kelly. Uh, leads coming from everywhere. Now, here's a chance. Tunbridge at the back. Oh, he seat. couldn't take the mark. He should have taken that one. He was in perfect position. Jay Viney. Oh, right out to their spaces. Here's Eichold. He wants to get on with it. Looking for a lead. Eichold hooks it back to the half forward line. Cuthbertson. Page at the back, punches it away. Cuthbertson races after it. Still got it in play. Oh, he threw that out. Tingay, Carroll. And the Swans get it away through Athorn. He's found Higgins. On it goes to Carroll. Kerr in front. Oh, what a great attempt to mark. Not paid. Ops to fight on behind the play. Love it and Tui. Here's a goal coming up, I think, to Djakovic. Sprints in, and I think he's got well, he's hit the post. So, bad miss on Djakovic. He certainly knows how to kick it behind. 
Well, I'll call it a point. 10-15 to 4-7. Nothing to surf the other yesterday, <laughs> is it, eh? Well, he should have kicked that one, uh, Jakovic. It's at 3-6 for the go. No. Oh, last three, week, 3-5 five, five five on Chris Langford last week, but he's got a touch of class as uh, Glenn Page brings it back into play for the half-back line with Spalding. He's got Tingay as a... So it was all Melbourne out there, right. wasn't it, Pete? Oh, yes, as well. Lovett was grabbed. Got, uh, Lovett Viney, I should say. And here's Dyson from 50 metres. Kicks a goal. Jakovic, perfect position. Leans into his opponent. It's tapped back oh. in front. Oh, Jakovic again. Hooks and kicks another behind. Or was oh. it Cuthbertson that time? It was Cuthbertson. Uh, Darren Cuthbertson. 10 16 to 4 7. And they really could have buried the Swans because the Swans playing very poorly. Yes, it's one of their uh, days I think they'd prefer to forget. Nettlebeck to Cordy. It was 6-8 last week and they've only scored 4-7 today. So 10 goals in two weeks was really not good enough. Love it. Hand pass. Too long for Yates, but he doubles back pretty quickly. Love it. To stretch. Stretch up towards right half forward. Better the long way from goal. Page to Lawson. Good handball. Onto Dennis Carroll coming into the play a little bit more in the third quarter. And that's better. Tui. Maybe oh. their best option up forward. That's exactly where Tui marked the ball. Well, Bays is a better kick distance-wise. I've seen Tui kicking from all, not from where he was, but he is a prodigious kick of the footy too. Mark Bays, that trusty left foot. What's he going to do with it this time? We'll just about get a score. Oh, a big oh, one. In the square. Oh, that's West. So like an eagle. And he's got to take those marks, doesn't he? He hasn't done it this year. Oh, they're that too hard to one. take those, Pete. That, that was a beautiful mark. Look at him float through the air here. Up he goes. Great grab. So Jim West from directly in front should go and does. Well, the Swans need a flurry of goals here in this next 12 minutes before three-quarter time. Murphy battling away to try and get it out of the centre. They're normally pretty good at the centre bounces. That's Carroll to the half-forward line. Bryce West behind him. Oh, well done by Bryce, out to Cuthbertson, a good mark, running with the flight of the ball just before it reached the boundary line. Cuthbertson had that great spell of three games earlier in the season, and he kicked a lot of goals. On two occasions, he kicked seven, Peter. That's right, and he was really firing in that forward pocket. This is Tingay, the half-forward line. Steins has it fisted away. Here's David Murphy. Now they're starting to get something going. Higgins over the top. Kerr a chance if he can break the tackle. He does. He sprints in the goal. And there's another one on the ball for the Swans. Good play. For the first time today, Sydney's kicked back-to-back -back goals. Kerr's first and Sydney six, six, seven, two, ten, six, two. Well, that's appreciated by a loyal band of supporters up here. They have been very vocal today because their players really haven't given them anything to be vocal about. See Bayes running on the ball there. That's a good move. They've got a bit of mobility. And Kerr, avoiding one Melbourne player, then gets around and has enough time to steady and enough presence to steady and bang through a much-needed goal. Who's first? So can Sydney keep its momentum going? 43 now to 76. Lewis taps down, but only as far as Cuthbertson. His kick out towards Viney. So Ooh. Aethorn, two Whoa. Melbourne players collided there. Aethorn ducked that pretty well. But back it comes to Flintoff. Centering kick, Jakovic takes a strong mark in front of Kelly. So looking at the facial, he, he does look a little bit like uh, Cuthbertson, doesn't he? Certainly from a distance. And similar players. I wonder if they have got Kelly up there in the back pocket on Jakovic. I was Jakovic. just thinking that, and I think it's a bad oh, move. If it, I if, hope that's not right. He wouldn't have the physical strength, I wouldn't think, for Jakovic. Well, Djakovic has kicked three. We have him at 3-5. And I don't think he's going to add to his goal tally anyway with that kick. So another behind to the Demons. Kicked by Alan Djakovic. 10-17. 77 to 6-7-43. So 34 points the difference. One's not out of it by any stretch of the imagination, but they would have to play better. They've kicked the last two goals. Bays in front of Tingay. It's going to be a bit of a problem this fellow for Steins because he moves around the ground. 
Mark Bose has kicked to midfield, stretch in front. There's the ball knocked away. Higgins tries to barge. In fact, does barge his way through. Well played, Leon Higgins. He needs some support. Long kick by the winger. Higgins into the goal square. Oh. Yes, this time, Tutrich. Did he use his hands? He did. But the umpire said no. Fair mark. Might have been a little push. Let's we'll see look. here on replay. Look at the arms go out. There's the arm. Oh. Did you pay that, Don? We paid Jimmy Stein, Mark. <laughs> Tunbridge kicks and goal. All of a sudden, the margin is only 28 points. So they're into the chance. Cuthbertson to the forward line. Oh, Mark to Jakovic. Don't know about Kelly playing on Jakovic. We said that a moment ago. It's only a little fella, uh, Kelly. They're just about exhausted as far as options go, aren't they, Peter, yeah. really? I thought you'd have to have a bigger guy. Jakovic is pretty strong. Look at the build of him. Well, they've got Thrip on the wing or half back. He had him earlier. Mm. Well, I suppose they, forward, they I had to do so. something, didn't they? Well, Jakovic has kicked three. Now he's directly in front. Alan Jakovic, he might have kicked a goal here, I think. Yes, he has. So that's his fourth. He's been an exciting player up there on the forward line. Plenty of skill. 11-17, Melbourne, Sydney. They remain on 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, he has kicked five, uh, seven points. And there he is. Putting through his fourth. Well, it's not a bad effort, is it? 11 shots at goal. Only four Melbourne players have kicked goals. Bennett's got five. Jakovic four. Lyon and Spalding the other two. As we come back to the centre, knocked down by Steins. Melbourne player taken high. The umpire says play on. Kelly to Carroll. Good smother by Steins. Rowe. Viney gets taken out of it. Desperation shown by both teams to try to get it out of the centre. And none has really succeeded. It's going to be a ball up. I wonder if Kelly and Page are changing in that back pocket on Jakovic because Page is now down on him. And a wrestle at midfield. No beverage in it. Breaks the tackle, or Mitchell does from him. Good tackle applied by Nettlebeck. Carroll with a slap on. Todd Viney. Two on two duel down there. Better takes the mark. A bit of ill feeling in midfield. And uh, Darren Bennett, Mark Orfrey kick. He'll get his sixth goal. Twenty-five metres out. Bennett kicks and goals. And Melbourne have replied very, very well. 12-17 to 7-7. And it is a delight to watch Bennett's kicking style. Here's uh, Luke Bibridge. Jay Viney. The half forward line. Oh, courage shown there by Nettlebeck. Here's Kelly. Court. Goes in to grab it again. He's looking for Mitchell. Mitchell socks off the ground, but it's all Melbourne out here. Darren Cuthbertson gets a bad bounce. Cleverly played it to Eichold, who was lying on top of the ball. Good, desperate play by the Swans. Here's Bays. Seems to be playing on the ball now. Kelly kicks straight to the man who is coming towards him. Good play by Spalding. He's trying to get in a hand pass. He does. Todd Viney hooks it back in front of goal. Oh, oh this sun. might bounce through. The sun in the eyes. Yes. Oh, the wrong side of the post is Glenn Page. He put the hands up, he didn't see that ball at all. 12 18 plays 7 7. You wouldn't have liked to be uh, looking into the sun and facing somebody like Courtney Walsh in this crowd like that, would you? To Mark Murphy. Well, not too many options. Carroll was uh, almost statuesque there as he took that hand pass. Oh, oh Steins and Lawson, <laughs> look at that. That's real Laurel and Hardy stuff, that. He was about a foot and a half taller than him. Dyson at midfield, where he plays his best football. Jakovic at the back. Got a fingernail to it. Eichold. Dragged down by Kelly. Yes, Crowd looking for holding the ball. And they will get their wish, I think, as the advantage rule is paid. Higgins takes it at left centre wing. Disposal usually impeccable. No uh, exception this time. Lewis. I mean, Gerald Healy's old number. Distinction here by the uh, Brownlow medalist. It's good mark again as he second this quarter west. Not as spectacular certainly as the previous one, but uh, a good overhead grab 
and almost with, well he would be within kicking distance the angle's pretty acute there though he's about 60 degrees maybe more not a bad sort of a kick but only one behind yes there's five minutes to go in the quarter the point registered by west 7 8 50 so the difference now at even 40 points as bryce kicks it and goes to the outer side but the umpire has blown the whistle it's cuthbert's and marks he's going to have to kick it in again i think tunbridge might have been a tad too near no i think the goal umpire hadn't finished well, the flag job, was it? The flags jamie lawson going off too for sydney and o'dwyer coming back on well, that's a mammoth kick stretch has the sit from oh, the back strong. but at the back not successful good mark taken by murphy he now has to play on oh. oh badly directed kick and todd barney chips in to take a very very easy ball well, that's mainly caused by the forwards not creating space and leading for the ball he was forced into that yates to center wing oh, good mark to sporting i reckon he plays his best football at center half forward sporting Sporting or oh, Bennett at the back. Danger. Oh, he couldn't quite hold on to it. Page dragged down after he got rid of the ball. No free kick. Strong tackle on Beveridge. And the ball is forced over the line. He's not happy about something. There's Jamie Lawson. And he's had a very, very quiet day. Jamie. Cordy versus Bennett. Nettlebeck comes in to lend a hand. Nettlebeck gets in a quick hand pass. Socket off the ground. This might be a goal. It is. And it might have been Bennett. Yes, a Bennett goal. Goals to Darren Bennett. Murphy. And a chance for Todd Vardy again inside the square. He'd be looking for Bennett or Djakovic. Oh, Djakovic is going to get this one. And buries it. Five to Djakovic. So two goals coming up in 20 seconds, three and a half minutes before three-quarter time, 42 points the difference. Well, that typically sums up today's game, doesn't it? A clean bowl to everybody. Sydney just, there's no luck or no, nothing going their way. It's going all Melbourne's. Look at this one. A clean bowls everybody. Look through everybody. And who's behind? By himself, Djakovic. An easy goal. Well, that's not luck. That's good play. What standing behind that is good play it was poor play by the Swans defense and that's talent when you can do that what oh. Bennett and he did seven to Bennett and five to Djakovic three and a half minutes to go in the quarter and 52 points the difference 50 plays 102 don't anyone ever let you tell them that forwards aren't the most important people in football when you see the two sides today because out they come that's Glenn Page bringing it to the center of the ground that's the difference in the two sides of the forward lines as the kick comes out towards center wing is Brett Lovett well that was a shocker straight to Dennis Carroll now Carroll kick long he's looking for Tui caught behind Tui is Kerr well done Robert Kerr Kerr the short one punched away from West well played Peter Road Graham Yates Steins Clever chip pass. Doesn't quite get to uh, Brett Lovett. He's got Tingay in support. Stephen Tingay. Straight up in the air. Nettlebeck. Flew a little bit too early. Obbs. Beautifully done. Spalding. Dyson. Jay Viney. Back it comes to Jay Viney now. Where's the lead? There it is. And uh, making space for himself was Djakovic. Beautiful lead, great pass, and he'll line up for goal number six. Well, there's just so many options going on that Page just didn't know where to go left, right, or up the centre, and uh, there was really no pressure, as we saw there, the break from the midfield. And when you're a forger, you're the lead confidently, knowing the ball will be delivered in the right way. Alan Jakovic for goal number six, puts it right through. 58 points the difference now and only a few minutes back it was about five goals in the demons favor beverage out to Stephen stretch good ship it by Viney. and this is too easy this one's a little bit in disarray at the moment it's quite interesting watching Stephen stretch on the break then the forwards all led both Djakovic and Bennett led but he put in another bounce and they found themselves out of position You've got to do the predictable thing if you're a fellow up and around midfield as far as the forwards go and kick the ball as soon as, you know, they think it's on, which is you don't bounce the ball, you kick it as soon as you get it. Spalding's one of only three goal kickers for Melbourne on the ground at the moment. Gary Lyons the other. He's on the bench. And he kicks the goal. Both of his goals coming from Marks. 
He's got two. Djakovic has got six. Bennett seven. And Gary Lyon one. And it came from a free kick early in the first quarter. And all this with Gary Lyon off the ground with a hamstring injury. Or a cork thigh or uh, whatever it is. So Melbourne doing it with consummate ease. Peter McKenna mentioned the importance of forwards. And that's been the difference between these two sides. Melbourne has options. Sydney has none. So close to three-quarter time. In fact, 57 seconds remaining. And it's been a good quarter for Melbourne. The latter part of it certainly has. As Bayes contests with Steins, and Steins wins it. Todd Biney. Oh, they've gone forward again. John Locke, Djakovic. He, can he play? Beautiful play, Djakovic. Out the Tingay. Todd Biney again, hooking it back in front of goal. Bennett and Flintoff. Flintoff couldn't quite hang on to it it off the ground in desperation a holding decision it will come back it'll be a free kick to Kelly and by Brendan Carlin officiating on that decision now Kelly goes short finds Lewis who's had a pretty quiet day too do you have had many good players nope. swans and oh good mark by Kerr good strong mark in front stretch 20 seconds of play left let's hope they can get a goal before three quarter time or two he crashes the pack down Brett Lovett Clever, class player. Oh, look at that <laughs> kick by Stein. It was a Gaelic football kick. It was. Tui to the pocket. Jay Viney races after it. Keeps it in play and plenty of confidence to come across the face. Look for Lovett. Oh, they've got the loose man now. Over to Cuthbertson, but there's the siren. Melbourne having a great day here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. 16-18, 114, lead the Sydney. It's 17850. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Ross. And I hope you find the commentary box before the match gets underway. <laughs> but uh, great atmosphere over there at Subiaco. I think the atmosphere down there, Pete, would be uh, anything but good as Colin Kinnear lays down a few facts of life. And he knows how to go off too, Colin Kinnear, as we uh, cross down the line, down the boundary line to uh, Cameron Williams. Yes, Peter, you're not wrong. The, he absolutely went off. I don't think he's the sort of man to give up, but I wonder really what he has new to say to these players. He stated the obvious. They've got their pride to fight for in this quarter. The match is out of their hands. And John Northey also stating the obvious, saying that if they man up, players keep the pressure on as they have throughout this match, they'll win and keep their, their finals hopes alive. Well, John Northey would be, I think, happy with their commitment today. Let's see what happened in the third quarter, Don. Wow, have a look at those in the third quarter. We know it was dominated by Melbourne by the screen, but have a look at that 63-37. They just blitzed them, didn't they, as far as positions go. Hit outs in favour of Melbourne. Oh, it's a debacle. The mark's about the only thing that it hold up, but uh, it's Melbourne in that quarter. I found it very, very difficult to find a good Sydney Swans player, maybe Neil Cordy, but he was simply overrun, wasn't he? Probably Higgins. Yeah, Higgins could be, yeah, but not too many others. All right, so Sydney with the job ahead of it to try to perhaps get some, uh, well, reorganise themselves here in the final quarter. And the sad part is they rely on their little men so much to lift them. You know, Mitchell, Murphy, and your little men just can't keep doing it week in, week out. And they miss the Brownlow medalist, don't they? Oh, Greg do Williams. They ever. He's the man that brings so many other players into it, and of course he's missing and is going to be missing for a few weeks. It's true, it's not a one-man side, but when you've got a player like him on the sidelines, you do lose a lot of drive from midfield. This will give Melbourne a lot of confidence, too. The final quarter of the SCG. 64 points the difference after the Demons booted 9-7 to 3-2 during the third quarter. Kelly effectively gets the hand pass. Lewis couldn't do much with it. Bryce kicks the ball out towards the centre wing position. Eichol could get there first for Melbourne, and does. Can't quite gain position. Now he regains composure. Kicks towards left half forward. Ball just about out of bounds. Kept in play. Viney takes the hand pass from Flintoff. Centering kick. Down to Bennett or Jakovic. The two-pronged forward line certainly working effectively this afternoon. Cordy. One of the Swans' better players. No doubt about that. Two of them flying together. Well, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Look at the Stretch numbers around the ball. From Cuthbertson. And this is Todd Viney now, left half forward, perhaps a little bit short of that position. Kicks to the 50 metre line, Beveridge missed the mark. Oh, look, backup support from Spalding, oh. and Stein's on his own. Can't he was about it. three or four metres in the clear, Don, wasn't oh. he? Stein's was back here contesting a mark a while ago, and now he's down there. I mean, it's just bad marking. Everywhere the ball's falling, there's Melbourne. 
Steins from well 25 metres out, kicks it goal and gets the goal. So Melbourne get their 18-7 feet goal rather. 17-18 to 7-8. It's a difference of 70 points. And here's the mark. It'll be quickly there. Spalding playing on quickly. And Steins by himself down in the forward line. And an accurate kick for goal. He's kicked one point today. One goal, one to Jim Steins. The centre ruck work's been a bit better too. He's starting to jump up there. And not come down without the ball as he has been doing in past weeks. Be interesting to see what he does at the centre bounce because he got Tunbridge earlier at the last one. Well, there's the big pup that time at the centre bounce. Lewis, quick kick, trying to get it forward. Or could have been a free kick to Kerr. Goes in to grab it again. Good play by Robert Kerr. He ran into a brick wall. A oh, bad hand pass allows Graham Yates to grab it and bring it to the half forward line. Spalding sets himself at the back. Can't take it. Well done by Nettlebeck. Spalding shoots out a quick hand pass. Flint off. That was a bad one. Taken away by Craig Nettlebeck. The short one is on on centre wing. Geez, tried hard all day. Barry Mitchell to the half forward line. Jay Viney was in front. Here's a chance for Kerr. Quick hand pass under enormous pressure and he puts it over the line. There he is, Robert Kerr. As I said earlier, he was a good VFA player in Melbourne a couple of seasons ago. Steins to do the ruck work. Don Scott, our co-commentator is the Melbourne ruck coach, of course, and watching with interest. Now that was Obst. Across to Todd Viney. Well, they've created the space as well today, Melbourne. It's Darren Cuthbertson. A clever little chip pass. He was looking for Tingay. Courage shown by Kelly. And desperation shown by Kelly. And this will be a bounce on centre wing. It's a wrestle at the moment. They all look pretty tired, don't they, early in the final quarter. Some rather slow bodies getting up there. Cuthbertson, the last of them. With also Kelly. Oh, Jimmy. Oh. Yes, well done, Don. You're not catching him now. Just relax. Enjoy the match. Eichol. Well, beautiful spin out by Luke Beveridge. And a very slick hand pass to Graham Yates. What's he doing down there? He likes to kick a goal. And I think he's got one. No. Yes, it's a goal. Dennis Carroll takes it forward, but oh, Brett Lovett's been like the rock of Gibraltar all day, showing his class on the smaller ground. Here's Tingay, oh, the loose man again is there. Oh, Look at this. Yes. I've never seen a swan side so less committed. Another loose man on his oh, own. Steins 20 metres out directly in front, and this is the worst committed swan side I've seen in a long time. They normally burrow in See, and they usually tackle, have a go, don't they? Don't they? But not today, and there's a well, there's a very disheartened Swans fan. Look at the look on his face. As Jimmy Steins comes in for another easy kick at goal from 25 metres. Kicks and right through the middle. So Steins has kicked his second. And Melbourne just doing as they like. 19-18 to 7-8. And there's, look, there's a look at happiness. And he's leading the cheer for Melbourne. <laughs> Well, they haven't had much to cheer about in recent weeks, the Melbourne supporters, but uh, Earl Spaulding playing on. We both anguished. Peter and I over the fact of the looseness of their defenders. It was shocking. Tunbridge has got to run with Steins because he's kicked two goals in this last quarter by running deep into the forward line. Well, Melbourne a chance to increase their percentage, which before the game was only 108.9, so if they're going to make the finals, they'll need to get that boosted. Stretch. And that's good news for Melbourne, him coming back into some sort of form too because he's had a fairly lacklustre year so far. Todd Viney had left half forward plank, still wearing the scars of the CUB sign. Flint off. Cuthbertson, centering kick. Plenty of options down there. Yates, he might take another one. Now the umpire didn't pay the mark. Dyson and Nettlebeck. Oh. And Bryce, oh, not at a, comes back to Djakovic. And Djakovic will kick a goal on his left foot. Dyson was standing in the goals where he could have hand passed it over the top. Well, two Melbourne players have kicked 14 goals between them. Bennett 7 and Djakovic 7. But, oh, really. Little back off too, Peter. Yes. And uh, O'Dwyer's come back on for Sydney. Tui up near the centre of the ground. Oh!
Carroll's dropped the sitter on the chest. Now he kicks from 60 and kicks into the man. Oh, they're doing as they like. Here's Flintoff. Tingay. Now, what's going to happen this time? There's a beautiful lead, Jakovic. Look, he read that. They haven't got much idea of the Swans today. Thanks. Much, I would say no idea. This is Jakovic just doing that as easy as he liked. He took that mark. Look at this. It's too easy. But he has got a lot of talent. I like this player. He's a real good football brain. Look at the kick. Drifting slightly, but sneaks it in for his eighth goal. Beautiful kick. So, what a performance by the two forwards. Eight for Jakovic, seven to Bennett and Melbourne. Just careering away with this game. They've taken their score on to 21-18 to 7-8. Well, this effort by Jakovic is the best effort, equal to that of Darren Bennett this year. Bennett had kicked eight goals. That was against Fitzroy in round two. Cuthbert's going to kick seven on two occasions. So, that effort of eight goals by Jakovic, equal to any... Melbourne player this year. 50 now to 144. As we come back into the centre again, Steins uncontested. Cuthbertson oh. nearly coat hanged. Logically, we'll get the free kick. Quick hand pass back to the big Irishman. Steins to half forward. Bennett missed the mark. That's a rarity. Jakovic, what can he do? Can he get another one? Can he get double figures today? Onto the left foot this time. The snapshot Ooh. is off target, though. And through for only one behind. Quite often, though, Pete, in the past, two-pronged forward lines haven't worked. And no. we go back to uh, Taylor and Roach at Richmond. It's got to be, obviously, a certain understanding because in the Victorian side, a couple of seasons back, Lockett worked very well with Dunstall. Well, one of them has to be a good ground player, and Dunstall certainly was that. And uh, you've got Jakovic here who's a great ground player. To his kick. Oh, Mark. Oh. Yes, great Mark Don. Starting to hold. Let's hope he can start and hold him. He's getting up high enough, Darren Bennett. Interesting to see if he goes. He well, might have a he shot. Could, yes. He kicked this, I reckon, <laughs> if he got onto it. Oh, come on. Well, well we saw Billy Brown just kick well, one from the centre of the ground up here one night. Have to be a Jeff torpedo Perry at Moorabbin that day. It'd have to be a torpedo. And he's going to the top tunnel. No, I think he's going to the top. Going to the top. Yep. Oh yeah. He didn't really get onto it. That's oh, another goal, Viney. Easy as you like. Well, John Northey would be delighted with this performance, but I think Colin Kinnear would be tearing his hair out. I wouldn't believe it was the same swan side that we've seen so often perform well up here. Bryce, it's across to Jay Viney. Tingay having a very good last quarter. Races after it. Oh, he's beaten to it, though, by Kelly. He taps it to the line and puts it over. But uh, they look very dispirited. The Swans, and he comes up the ground, Kelly. And little Lawson, Jamie Lawson, will take his place. Half forward for Melbourne, Spalding versus Tunbridge. Spalding won it. Oh, look at the pace. Jamie Lawson, one bounce. Kicks to the forward line. West at the back. Tapped the ground. Jay Viney mopping up. Oh, loose men everywhere for Melbourne. Stretch. A couple of bounces. He'll go back inside to Stein. Gee, covers a lot of territory for a big man. Oh, Lawson smothered it well. He'll be able to get away. Should run with it here, but he elects to kick instead to Carroll. Now they're a chance. They've got two loose men, the Swans. Two against one. West lets it bounce. Oh, my goodness me. Can you <laughs> believe this forward work? It'd have to be here to believe. He should have snappled that with his eyes closed. You can see that lady. Oh. oh. I think she had the same idea there, oh. Pete. Well, I've had a good weekend. I saw Collingwood uh, thrash the Crows yesterday by an excess of 100 points, and I've got the double here this afternoon. <laughs> so, Mitchell. A little bump the average up. Murphy, right on the boundary line. Centering kick. And oh, West. that was oh, good mark. That was a good mark. That was a good mark. Well, he's taken probably the mark of the day anyway here. Jim West, he's kicked one goal. He should be able to get his second with this one. That is a great mark. That was a great mark. Running with a flight of the ball. And West kicks and gets the goal. Well, back to the centre. Steins. Oh, big thump to half forward. Flint off. Kicks it straight to Tui. Bernard Tui. He's gone wide to O'Dwyer. Haythorne. Higgins. 
now. The ball's at centre of the ground. Dyson read it well. Flintoff in trouble. <laughs> Runs into two Swans players. Gets it to Eichel. He goes wide to Cuthbertson now. Where's the leads of the forwards? Oh, bad kick down Cuthbertson. Straight to Lawson. Lawson to Carroll. Carroll to Tripp. Oh, good mark to Terry Tripp. One-hander. Now, let's see if they can do something down forward this time. They've got He's one too man slow. Back. He's allowing Steins to get back there for the big kick. Love was with Jay Viney. He's, he wants to kick it short. That's what he wants to do. You can see he was just waiting for someone to make that space, and it was uh, the captain, Dennis Carroll, getting there. And marks 40 metres from goal directly in front, and one of the great kicks in the game, Dennis Carroll. And Brad Tunbridge has gone off, and Kelly coming on. Kelly won't go into the ruck. They'll probably use Bays in the ruck. Well, Carroll hasn't kicked the goal today. A nice looking drop punt. It's a goal, all right. So that's his first, and the Swans are belated goal, 9 9 to 22 19. He hasn't had a good day today, Dennis Carroll. I've seen him play a lot better. But he still averages 17 kicks a game. He's in the top 10 of the AFL kick getters. He can certainly get distance with his kicks. Dennis Carroll, he is a magnificent kick. He's probably been up all night. His uh, wife gave birth to a baby overnight, so we will excuse Dennis Carroll today, I think, for his performance. Steins against Bays. With Tunbridge off the ground. Kelly, looping hand pass. Bryce, love it. Love its kick out towards Stretch on the centre wing. And a return to form for him, a real bonus. Arsholt takes the hand pass from Flintoff. This is something you do. Another goal again. Steins. It's like a training, Julia. Again, yeah, so I think, it's exactly right. Something you do at training the way Melbourne are playing. And they were up and under kick. Bennett from the back. Couldn't take the grab. Lawson. We spent a bit of time on the bench today. Bennett snaps. Won't be a goal. So Page. Kicks towards Tui. Tui a short pass. Not a well-directed one because Cuthbert's oh. got two hands to it. I don't know why he didn't pay the mark. Higgins. The hand pass effectively out to Kelly. Who screams down the wing onto Strip? Strip it right half forward, measures the kick up towards full forward and gets the goal. It always looks a little bit better when you kick double figures and they've taken the score under 10 9. Here's Lewis trying to crash his way through the pack. Yates gets the ball smothered off the boot, grabbed by Lewis again. Dale Lewis to the pocket. Jay Vine, he's been a good player, but this time he's been beaten for it by Jason Love. Love goes short, good lead, and a good mark. Murphy's tried hard all day, Don. I think he can do a little bit more, David Murphy. He really doesn't live up to the promise that he does show. He's not as good as he was a couple of years ago. I think you're being a little bit tough on him. He was a good player last week, but... He kicks from 50, Murphy, and it's a floater, and floats the wrong side of the post. So one behind. Two of the Swans. 12 minutes of play left. 10-10 to 22-19. Melbourne about to bring it back in through Peter Road. Now he's gone short to Bryce. And plenty of run today, Melbourne. Stretch. Oh, good mark. That's Dyson. Jay Viney. Tackled by Mitchell. Well Spalding. done, Spalding. Yes, it was well done too to Eichold. The race for the ball at centre wing on Carroll went without it. Here's Yates. Back he comes to, uh, well, it was Dyson. Mitchell a chance from 60. Bounce. Oh, of course. Oh, that could have been holding the ball. It is. It is, it is. That Dyson was a great that. tackle. Jay Viney. Wide to Todd Viney. Spalding and Carroll. The loose one comes to Eichel. Eichel from centre wing goes to the pocket. Oh, good lead. That was great play for Melbourne there by Djakovic. He's gone short, and he's found a man there. And this is Dyson. Now, Dyson will nearly put this into the rafters here. He is a beautiful... Gee, that, would be a good well, that would be a big kick, Peter. <laughs> well, I'll tell you kick. what. I'll tell you what. He kicks. He'll kicks. he kick from the 15-metre right. line. We'll see the rafters. And I'll look at Phil if he doesn't make the distance, <laughs> won't I? Well, he's a normally a great kick. Oh, he just doesn't... Just gets onto it and puts it through for a goal. 70 plays, 157. Quick kick out of the centre comes up towards Eichold. Carroll gets there first. And the Swan Sipper 
Skipper goes out right, nearly hit the boundary umpire actually. Flint off. And Page. Flint off wins out. He'll give it to Todd Viney. He'll give it to Brett Lovett. Brett Lovett kicks inside 50. Bit of jostling in that pack there. Tui over the top. Steins taken down. Tingay taken high by Lawson. Umpire calls play on hand pass by Tingay. A little bit too long for Steins. And Carroll able to do the mopping up work. And in so doing gets it to Tui. Tui up towards the centre wing position. Yates. Back to Lovett. Then a too strong, too tall. And he had the run and the sit. And yep. would just about get the distance too. Well, I'd back him from 55. Well, we might see those rafters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the rafters mixed yeah. up with the fence. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bennett. Oh, it's going to be close. Off the hands and one behind. So, another point to Melbourne with under 10 minutes remaining in this match, which has turned out to be a bit of a mismatch. 70 is 158. And Dennis Carroll. Probably had that hard day's night, as we mentioned, with uh, his wife giving birth. Bays. He would have liked a better present than this, though. Higgins' kick up towards Lewis. Murphy. Lawson. He hasn't had that many touches, but since he's come back onto the ground for this stint, he's done a lot better. Rice. Cuthbertson. Marking on centre wing. No good doing that, Neo. Leon, you should have been doing it earlier. Looking for Bennett and finds him. Now Mark two of them. Darren Bennett won't get the distance from there. So centering kick, Jakovic was the target, oh, and Yates. Jakovic leaves it for Yates. Where's his man? So Graham Yates has kicked one goal. Strong mark. Just doing it too easily, aren't they? they you are. see Lewis just wandering behind. Yeah, no no real effort. You've really got a man up. That's football basics, isn't it? Just run with your man if things are not going your way. So Graham Yates from about 35 metres out. Effectively directly in front. We'll wait on the goal umpire for this one. It's a goal. A long time since Graham Yates has kicked two goals in a football match, but he's done it today. He's Kerr. Trip. Lewis from 40. Beautiful kick normally. Lewis swings it in with the left foot. And it's a goal. So he's kicked his second. Maybe we could ask the same question. Where the ledger for the other one he, when he well, didn't chase Yates. The question could be where was Graham Yates on that occasion, oh, Peter? Yes, fair question. Here it is. Thrip. Across to Lewis. So Dale Lewis makes it his second goal. Joining Mitchell and West as kicking two for the Swans. 11-10 to 24-20. Clock showing seven and a half minutes left in this match. Lawson from midfield. A good hand pass onto Lewis again. That's a mammoth kick up into the square. Snapshot is off target by Love. In fact, it might have gone through for a behind that. No, out of bounds. Kick one goal, Jason Love. Fairly early in the match. So throw in. Only 10 metres from the goal. Over the top was Thrip. Hand pass comes out to Lovett. Bryce got one hand to it. Took Lewis out at the same time. Socket away by Kerr and applies a good tackle. Ops goes in in turn to apply one to Kerr. Likewise, Dyson drags him down. Picked up by Mark Bays. And uh, what's the umpire when he bounces this ball and see what difference he is to every other umpire? Yes, he bounces it uh, end on, doesn't he? That's right. So what does that mean? Is the South Australian? He is. Thank you for that. Obst. Tackle again applied by Kerr. Boundary line a little bit too close for Yates. No, he did well. Up and under kick. Eichold punches the ball further forward, close to centre wing, where once again we'll see a throw in. And that umpire is Michael Abbott, of course, the other one being Brendan Carlin. Hard enough to bounce the ball anyway. I was that, just going to yeah, say that's that's right. <laughs> it looks much harder that way, doesn't it? Bays in front. Now three Swans players are there. And Barry Mitchell is the one to come away with it. Oh, oh good strong mark. mark to Jay Viney. 
goes across the goal. Stephen Stretch, the target. Oh, it bounces beautifully for him. Stretch at left half back, measures the pass onto Cuthbertson. And as Peter McKenna would say, they've got loose men everywhere. Love it. Brett Lovett, that is, up towards left half forward flank. Bennett overruns it. Oh, nice work. Tingo has been watching the young Socceroos. Gets it back to Viney. Viney's hand pass. Maybe not as good as it could have been. Carroll, a quick hand pass. And the Swans once again will get out of this. Kick up. Came from uh, O'Dwyer. Now Thrip. This is where they've been letting themselves down, though. The forward line road tackled and drops the ball. A play on call from the umpire. Snapshot by Jason Love. Not bad. Might be a goal. And is. 12-10 to 24-20. Back to the centre. And he'll get it out this time. Swans players appealing for a free kick. And it will go their way. This is Lewis. Dale Lewis. Let's see the long booming kick. He brings it to... The pocket, oh good, courageous mark taken by Ops, running back with the flight of the ball. And thrips down in the centre of the ground too, Peter, and his hand is on one knee. Well, Eichold kicks out of bounds on the pull, so it'll be a penalty kick down there to Dennis Carroll. Looks like he might have done his ankle too, let's hope it's not too serious. Carroll to half forward, oh it's all Melbourne, here's Stein, <laughs> he covers some territory but he has it kicked away by O'Dwyer. And Dwyer on the right foot, up in front of goal. Jason Love at the back, <laughs> couldn't grab it. Here's Jim West. Hand pass over the top. David Murphy steadies, kicks in a goal, but wasn't a good kick, and the mark has been taken by Stretch. Now, he's gone short, he's got Cuthbertson, and he's got loose men to give it to. We had an option of about three players. Jay Viney, hand pass to Tingay. Well, he might go over the top here. No, he kicks it on the left foot. Spalding, can he get there? Yes, he can. A good mark. Spalding and half forward. Left half forward flank, Earl Spalding. No mark taken. Beveridge in front and can goal and gets it. So Luke Beveridge joining the list of goal kickers, an ever-growing list for the Demons, getting his first in Melbourne's 25th. 25-22-12-10. As Luke Beveridge banged through that goal, Terry Tripp went off the ground, who's replaced by Nettlebeck. And there's Djakovic. Beveridge, it was good to see Luke getting involved. He just hasn't quite made it yet, but let's hope that this game could add a little bit to his confidence. So nine Melbourne players have now scored goals. We've got three and a quarter minutes left in the match. And again, we saw the value of a forward who got in front before Djakovic, by playing in front, helped create that goal. Here's Dennis Carroll. To the half-forward line, Nettlebeck's had a quiet game. Caught, drops it. Stretch, starting to run into a little bit of form. That'll be pleasing for Melbourne. Here's Cuthbertson. He's done fairly well too. Bryce, former North Melbourne player, takes the ball to half-forward. Oh, well done, Todd Viney. Oh, he kept it in... Oh, well, no, it bounced out. Bounced out. So it'll be a throw-in. Well, right on centre wing. 25-20, the Demons under perfect conditions, leading the Swans 12-10. Steins versus Bays. Bays has been a very quiet player. Todd Viney and Steins. Steins cleverly over to Eyeshold. He ran into a brick wall. Lawson, dodging and weaving. His best quarter's been his last, but he didn't do enough early. Higgins has tried hard. Long hand pass out to the spaces. Dennis Carroll on the left foot from 55. Hooks it back to Mitchell, 30 metres out from goal. That was good play. So Barry Mitchell could get his third goal and become the Sydney Swans' leading goal kicker for the afternoon. Put that back well in, Dennis Carroll. Barry Mitchell... Well, he's been their best player, hasn't he, really? So, 21 possessions. Well, he's going for goal number three from directly in front. Normally pretty accurate, and that one is no exception, a goal. A very belated goal to Mitchell for his third, and the Swans take their score on to 13-10. Melbourne remain 25-20. Well, they're adding a little bit of respectability to the scoreboard now. It's a bit too late, isn't it? Dennis Carroll running onto it well, brings it back. Screws it back across the right shoulder. Finds Barry Mitchell. Mitchell, who had a problem with accuracy last year. 
Hasn't had a problem today. He's kicked three goals straight. And they can't find the football. And uh, animated conversation down there. So I think we'll be getting a new ball. Only a minute and a half left in this match. I think the football might be with one of the spectators halfway to Paddington or Randwick. Saying that's his well, he wants to have a kick. He wants to have a kick. I think he's had a few sherbets. I would say that'd be uh, more than likely. It's about the only thing that's brought the Sydney crowd to life today. Oh, they might they bring him on. Much to cheer about, they have they? Bring him on and put him at full forward for the Swans. Maybe they could do worse. I'll never forget when I was playing football, the dog ran onto the field and I went to take it off. The spectator said, leave the dog on and take yourself <laughs> So back into the centre, with only a minute and a half remaining. Todd Viney kicks the half forward over the head of Spalding. Jakovic, Spalding could kick a goal here. Tackle applied by Carroll. Spalding turns and snaps and has missed the goal. So one behind with the Demons ever mounting tally. Quite an impressive one, 25-21, 171. And this one's 13 10 88. Dennis Carroll with a minute to go in the match to kick the ball back into play. On the scoreboard, it's been the Swans' best. They've kicked six goals in this quarter, but of course, on the other hand, Melbourne has added a further nine, as they did in the third term. That looked a little high on Bernard Tui. I don't think he appreciated that. The advantage rule won't be paid, and the ball, let's take a look at it again. Sent off. Who laid it, but Bernard thought it was Darren Cuthbertson who's having words <laughs> to him. The wrong fellow, Bernard. Whoa, here we go. Tinga and Carroll off the ground. Viney, it's going to be a Swans free kick. Yes, this will go to Bays. Bays from half back has kicked it right out wide to Kerr. Good mark by Kerr. Robert Kerr brings it to the full forward line or Steins puts himself in that position. Here's a chance for West on the left foot to hook it back at goal. It's floating. It's a good kick. It's a goal. So Jim West has kicked his third. He did that with consummate ease, didn't he, Jim West? His third goal. He's kicked 3-3 today. Came out and did it really in slow motion. Watch this. Kerr, the high ball, the pack flies. Down he goes. Gets onto it easily, goes onto the left foot and snaps over the right shoulder. For his third, Jim West. And the Swans' seventh goal this quarter, certainly their best. But it's a case of too little, too late. The horse is well and truly bolted. And it'll be a good win for Melbourne. Eichold kicks up towards full forward. Djakovic Ooh. couldn't take it that time. Page from short of centre half back. Tingo, though, takes the mark in front of Leon Higgins. Maybe too far out to score. In fact, the clock ticking down. Yeah, might 50. not get a chance. Oh, 50 metres. Oh, that's rubbing salt into the wounds. It is, isn't it? So Tingo will take the kick. The Swan score won't alter. And that's 14 10 94. And Stephen Tingo has a chance for his first goal. And he will be virtually at point blank range. Actually, that action sums up Sydney's effort today by Leon Higgins to give away 50 metres like that. And he gets the goal, and that ends the match. 26 goals, 21, therefore, for the Melbourne tally. 26-21, 177 points. They finished up kicking 10 goals in the last quarter, and Sydney added seven. But after half-time, really, it was a one-horse race, wasn't it? It really was, and, uh, well, great effort by Melbourne. They needed to win this, and they needed to have a good win. There's uh, Tingay and Cuthbertson having a little chat. Uh, Jakovic was brilliant up at full forward. He kicked eight goals, as did Bennett with that two-pronged attack there. They are shaking hands with each other. A lot of people would have had doubts whether that would work, but they're two different styles of play, and uh, top effort by Melbourne. They had good players all round the ground, and started with Steins at the centre, bounces, and uh, Brett Lovett was a top player in defence, hardly made a mistake, and, uh, well, both Vineys did well, and coming off the ground is Jakovic, and down there with him is Cameron. Alan, tremendous effort. Eight goals from you. That equals Darren Bennett's uh, best performance by a Melbourne player this year. You must be pretty happy. Yeah, I'm happy that we won, first of all. And, uh, we uh, defeated that hooter. You know, we're going to go on from now. And it's a good feeling. Yeah. It's a great feeling also to break uh, that run of darks five in a row. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. You know, it's, uh, we're going to move on from here and go, go from 
figure the better things now. Yeah, thanks. Alan Djakovic were pretty pleased with his effort. Thanks, Cameron. The statistics for the match, well, they really do tell the story, Don. Yes, they really do sum up the game as far as Sydney were concerned. I thought they were absolutely pathetic, Sydney, today. And, uh, you know, they, they, Melbourne just obliterated them on the statistical sheet and on the scoreboard. And really, you can't say much for Sydney's effort today. Very hard to find good players where Melbourne had a multitude of good players. And a lot of this would have brought players back into confidence as far as Melbourne is concerned. And it's a much needed win for that Melbourne side and it's good to see supporters now starting to travel and enjoy their football. Yes, well the airfares are a lot cheaper than they used to be, Don, so maybe that could account for it. So this runs with the goal kickers for Melbourne. Jakovic got eight and Bennett seven. They were their major contributors. Spalding got a couple, Yates two, Steins two and for Sydney. Mitchell got three goals, West three, Love two and Lewis Orca also kicked two goals. So that just about clears our commitments for some network stations here at the SCG. We hope you've enjoyed the game. Certainly a very one-sided affair with Melbourne winning easily. We say a very good afternoon to viewers through BTQ Channel 7 in Brisbane. OK, so as I said, that uh, all but clears our commitments here. A pretty one-sided affair to end the game. But importantly for Melbourne fans, the Demons back on the winning list. The Swans have some homework to do, and I would say that they have already started to do it up there now. Let's go over to Subiaco, the big game between the West Coast Eagles and St Kilda. Dennis Cometti, a very good afternoon.